you, Chris. That's Heinz Field at the confluence where the Allegheny and the Monongahela River meet to form the Ohio. In the background, downtown Pittsburgh, PA, an all-American city. With that great song from Lee Greenwood helping these fans celebrate and show their American pride. They're also showing off New Heinz Field, the first nationally televised game for the Panthers and for the Steelers, for that matter, from this stadium. And who better to help show it off? The number one team in the land, the Miami Hurricanes. ESPN's College Football Thursday Night, presented by Circuit City, welcomes you to Pittsburgh for the 2-0 Canes against the 1-1 Pittsburgh Panthers. Antonio Bryant won the Bolitnikoff Award, best receiver in the country last year. He's only played three snaps all year because of an ankle sprain. We see him in warm-ups an hour ago. He's ready to go. We welcome you to the start of the college football weekend with Dr. Jerry Punch, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit. Mike Tirico, glad to be back with you guys. Well, Miami's won their first two games by a combined score of 94-7. to They're good, they're loaded, they're the Canes again. Consensus number one. Let's tell you why they're good. First, their offense. Well, Mike, I think Miami quite possibly could have not only the most balanced offense in college football, but also the most explosive. They have all the ingredients, a big, strong offensive line, great skill at wide receiver, speed and depth at running back, but the most important commodity, a veteran quarterback in Ken Dorsey. Dorsey makes a lot of good decisions for this football team. He's very, very important key because he has to make Big decisions at the line of scrimmage. They give him a lot, and he handles it very well. Tonight, he's going to face a Pittsburgh defense that's going to come after him. They're going to take some chances, play a lot of man coverage, and hope to pressure him. They're going to take, they're going to roll the dice, and we're going to see if it's going to work out for him tonight. They're going to roll the dice. That Miami defense rolls the dice. They're considered to be the number one defensive team in the nation, and I'm going to tell you why. They got size, they got speed, and they got athletes at every position, and all those things are real good. And they got some awesome statistics. When you see these things, you won't believe them. My favorite is 29 out of 30 times they've held their opponent scoreless. Yo, that's my first yo of the night. Now, Miami's defense is talented, but they haven't been tested this year. You know why? Because the offense just goes out and blows people away. I'm interested to see if, I know, a big if, Huge if, 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 can protect their passer, David Priestley. Yeah. They might be go over the top and make this thing closer than the experts think. Remember, Pittsburgh lost its last game to South Florida. Tonight they play the team from South Florida, the team in the nation, number one Miami. But there's a lot of support for the Pittsburgh Panthers tonight. They brought back some of their great players, including Dan Marino, all here to see if Pittsburgh can knock off number one Miami. We kick it off from Western PA in two minutes. ESPN's Thursday Night College Football is presented by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And in part by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Number one team in the nation, Miami, on our Thursday Night College Football presented by Circuit City, damp night in western Pennsylvania. We had a rain shower an hour ago. The field is slick. Light rain probably through halftime, a possibility, with a cool temperature that will be in the 40s most of the game. And dealing with that on the sidelines and everything else, here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc. Thank you very much, Michael. You know, Miami head coach Larry Coker can tell his team that on any given Saturday, or in this case Thursday, anything can happen. But after a 19-day layoff, you got to wonder if they have the focus enough to believe him. But last week, he got all the focusing help he could use from an unusual source, arch rival Florida State. To recap what happened last Saturday, the Seminoles were a 17-point favorite going on the road to play a conference opponent who hadn't been playing very well. What happened? Well, the Tar Heels of North Carolina bloodied their nose and sent them home a 32-point loser. Tonight, the top-ranked Miami Hurricanes go on the road to play a conference opponent that hasn't been playing very well. Hmm. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? Larry Coker knows what could happen, and across the field, Walt Harris believes it will. Michael? Doc, Walt Harris is 54 years old, took this team to a bowl game, its best season since 1989. Last year, Pittsburgh was 7-5. and five. 
Walt Harris actually followed Larry Coker on the offensive staff at Ohio State back in 94 then 95. The series history between these two teams has been dominated as are most of the series in the Big East Conference by the Hurricanes since they joined the league. But on Thursday Night Football in 1997, over at Pitt Stadium a few miles away, that used to stand there, the Pittsburgh Panthers knocked off Miami 21-17. That's been talked about a few times around these parts this week. As Jerry mentioned, both teams have had 19 days off. Pittsburgh won the toss, deferred to the second half. Miami will receive Nick Lotz kicking for the Panthers. And we are underway from Heinz Field. It will be Andre Johnson on a short kick from the 15. And Johnson burst into the secondary, pushed out of bounds at the 37 by the kicker, Nick Lotz. Check out the starting lineups, and we begin with Ken Dorsey, the junior quarterback, 16-1 and one as a starter. Here are the people touching the ball around Dorsey as we check out the Bud Light starting lineups. Najee Davenport, Clinton Portis is averaging seven yards a carry. Johnson and Daryl Jones back after the knee injury. Tight end Jeremy Shockey's averaging 15 yards a catch in two games. He has 11 grabs. Dorsey to the air on first down. Underneath for Davenport against the linebacker and into the secondary. Najee Davenport tripped up to the 39-yard line with a opening pickup of 25 yards. Great start for the Canes. Here are the guys who protect Dorsey. Ryan McKinney, number 78, is 6'9", 336 pounds. Remember one thing about this situation. Miami has not allowed a single sack this year. Be interesting to see if the Panthers can get to him. Up front, the guys trying to do it. Smith and Stevens and Conlin from this area. And Brian Knight, excellent defensive end from Buffalo, New York, has a sack. Dorsey first down toss, complete to Andre Johnson, the sophomore from senior high school in Miami. Picked up four yards. Check the back seven for Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh needs a big night from Gerald Hayes and Brandon Williams and Purefoy, all three, because this defense is built for the linebackers to make plays. And early in this game, you're already seeing Miami attacking in different ways. Back in the secondary, Sean Robinson gets the start at left corner with Walker and Ponko. Torrey Cox, the other corner, is from Northwestern High School in Miami. He's all fired up to get his go up against his old hometown team. This is second and five. First, Gary Clinton Portis met at the point of attack by Ramon Walker. Junior free safety from Akron, Ohio. Loves to get up and make plays. A Pittsburgh player shaken up for a moment, but Walker made a good play. They're going to do a lot of things today. They're going to take some chances. Ramon Walker is basically up at linebacker, and he's going to come up and fill the hole. He is very physical. and. Pittsburgh's whole goal defensively is try to get Miami into third and long situations and then come after him. Injured player Joe Conlon, the lineman, third and five pass complete to Andre Johnson. Across the 25 and the first down for the sophomore. So Ken Dorsey has come out very effective here in the early going. An 11-yard pickup on that one. See, one thing that you have to be careful with Ken Dorsey, because of his savvy, 16-1 and one as a starter, he will take what the defense is going to give him. Here, twice early in his drive, the corners from Pittsburgh have been off the line. He has the option, very simply, to come back, drop back, look at those corners, read them, and make the throw, and he's, he's very accurate. I watched Dorsey in a pregame warm-up. He threw 15 passes, 14 complete, and every one of the Miami Hurricanes caught it with their hands. They're tremendously and well-impressed, and I really like the way they're coached offensively. As you see, Miami takes a timeout will step aside as well. Opening drive on College Football Thursday night. Back after the Miami timeout, the Canes offense at the 23 of Pittsburgh. Miami two games this year, dominated Penn State 33-7 over in State College, then beat Rutgers at home 61 to nothing. So you see the average on offense has been staggering numbers. Remember that last one, 8.2 every time this offense snaps the ball. Excellent figure. First and ten, Robert Williams, senior tight end, was the move man, and a marker comes down. They may get Jeremy Shockey here, kind of leaning back in his stance mm -hmm. after Pittsburgh defensive end Brian Knight jumped a little bit. Right, for the snap, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Gene Steratore leading this Big East crew. 
You know, Shockey as a tight end could lean a little bit back, but when it was a man in motion, that meant two men were in motion, right. and that's why the penalty came about. See those numbers from Shockey. Outstanding start to the season for the junior from Oklahoma. Could be the best tight end in college football. First and 15. A run with Portis. Gets it back and more. Clinton Portis to the six-yard line. First and goal, Kane. 22 well, we, on that one. We talked about the offensive line with number 78. Ryan McKinney is a monster. And I tell you one thing about them. Watch Shockey come off the ball. Number 88. He gets good position on the second level right there. You notice right there, that's a tight end blocking, and that's perfect position for Portis to run the football. Art Kehoe, their offensive line coach, has been at Miami for 20 years. He's one of the best line coaches in the country. First and goal for the Cave. And the give to Portis. Amir Purifoy, the linebacker, Mark Ponto, the safety, come up to greet him at the four, gain off a couple. Paco's the number four tackler on this team, and he is just a football player. You can put other guys out there, they have better 40s, better vertical jumps, but this kid just knows how to find the football. Play after play. Great feel for the game, and makes up for the lack of speed with the intelligence and understanding of the scheme. Kind of their quarterback of the defense, especially being back in the secondary. There's not one bad Miami offensive stat we could put up. You see in the red zone there, almost automatic. Power football, Portis, untouched. Touchdown, Miami. I'd like to say one thing right away. You think that 19-day layoff hurt the Miami Hurricanes? No. Have you ever seen a more smooth operation offensively, Kirk, this year or, or years? Well, from these guys all year. This is pretty I'm, much the way it's been against Penn State and Rutgers. And the thing you, you, you appreciate is they're number oh. one in the country. Everybody talked about possible the layoff and overlooking a team like Pittsburgh. They obviously have uh, shown up ready to play, and I think that speaks not only about the coaching, but the maturity of the team. A missed kick by Todd Severs, and Pittsburgh falls on it, so the extra point try is no good. First miss of the season. Some confusion on the snap, hold, and kick. Still Clinton Portis on the scoreboard. Seven plays, 62 yards in a couple of quick minutes. Number one leads by six. ESPN's Thursday Night College Football is brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Taco Bell. In the last 18 years, Miami's 144 and 14 when they score first. It only took two minutes and 14 seconds to score there. Held them over their uh, their average. What was it <laughs> minute 29 coming in? 26. In? Minute 26. Nine okay. touchdown drives. But they have lost 14. Is that right? They have lost 14. So nobody turned off the TV. <laughs> Seavers kicks off to Tory Cox from four yards deep. The kid from Miami brings it out. Has a few canes behind him. Tory Cox is running like a man with a mission. Stays on his feet and caught from behind with the 45 by Jamel Weaver. Fabulous return of 55 yards by Cox. I'll tell you what, when you're coming off a disappointing loss to a team you feel you should have beaten in South Florida, and now all of a sudden you're playing the number one team in the country and they score in the opening drive, look at the moves and how big is this to get this team emotionally back in the game. Great moves by Cox, all outstanding blocking, and he's able to hold on to the ball and put Pittsburgh into Miami territory here on their first drive. Interesting thing about that, Cox is the only Florida kid on the Pittsburgh defense. Yep. First and 10, Panthers start in Kane territory. David Priestley, their quarterback, shovel pass to Raymond Kirkley, just a yard for the freshman tailback. Let's introduce you to the Pittsburgh Panthers. Playing here tonight, senior quarterback from California, David Priestley. Four touchdowns, one pick this year. He's had ups and downs in his career, and perhaps an uptick at this point for him. On the Bud Light starting lineup, checking the rest of the skill players. Kirkley carried to open. They're very young at tailback. Lou Polite, sophomore, back off of injury. Lamar Slade, RJ English. But you will see Antonio Bryan in the game right away, as a matter of fact. And Chris Wilson, the tight end. There is Bryan on the field for the Panthers. 
the Valitnikov Award winner last year. Significant injury for Miami. D.J. Williams, top tackler. This sophomore was the USA Today Defensive National Player of the Year. Coming out of high school and is not putting any pressure on that left leg. D.J. Williams played fullback last year. He's played linebacker now this year. Arguably, maybe the best athlete on the Miami Hurricane roster. And you say that, it tells you something about his ability. From California, but he was a great, great, great high school football player and offense. Yep. When it comes to defense here. And that's a tough injury for Miami. Doc will keep an eye on it. It is second and ten for Pittsburgh. And the gift to Kirkley. Left side. Into the secondary. First down to the 32-yard line. Let's check out the Panthers up front. If Pittsburgh has any chance tonight, these guys have to have a big game. They're young. Petiti, Shaw, Reed, the center, and Anderson. Here's the D-line for Miami. The defensive line for Miami has great depth. You want to keep an eye on Andrew Williams, number 99. Incredible athlete with great size, and they hope to pressure Priestley with that defensive front. Pittsburgh, no huddle, four receivers on first and ten. Nearly missed the exchange. Kirkley hangs on, and he's down to the two. All right, first thing you got Pittsburgh answers. Very important. But the left side of the line, Kirk, they only had five guys in the box because Pittsburgh spread them out all over the place. That's why that play worked. Great scheme by Walt yeah. Harris. The other thing is all the talk about Antonio Bryant. Antonio Bryant in the passing game of Walt Harris. Here they're coming out early and establishing the running game. First snap of the red zone in the red zone against Miami this year is a touchdown for Rod Rutherford, the backup quarterback. Rutherford comes in in goal line situations. He's a better runner than Priestley. Interesting stat here. Pitt has been inside the opponents 26 times. They scored five touchdowns and one field goal up until that point. They know how to get in it. There's the point is good. Four plays, 44 yards, a minute 34. And not only did Miami give up its first snap in the red zone this year, they give up their first first quarter point of the year, and for the first time this season, the Canes trail. If I was Walt Harris now, I would call timeout and go out and take a picture of that for my recruiting. You know anybody who's done I that did, before? I did that once against <laughs> Ohio State. It says, hit seven, Ohio's hit seven, Miami, Miami number one in the nation, six. I take it right now and put it up on my wall and show all my recruits. All right, all right. Well, it, to get to get back and talk some football here right now, yeah, you know what? I'm telling you. You know what? Miami is now getting tested early. It's the first time all year they got popped in the mouth. How are they going to respond? Mike mentioned Rutsford is an athletic quarterback. Good change of pace inside the red zone, and the option call is always good. And how about the Pittsburgh offensive line on the right side there with John Shaw, Chad Reed, the center, and Petiti, the right tackle. Big hole. He's able to knife his way in there. And I think Miami's defense, more than anything, not only are they on their heels, they're stunned looking around at each other right now. Remember one thing. One of the biggest things about an upset is you've got to answer the favorites scores and that's exactly what Pitt did. They psychologically just stuck it right in their mouth when they needed it. And guys don't forget the kickoff return. How important that was from a psychological standpoint to get Pittsburgh the ball in Miami territory to start that drive. On the kickoff Andre Johnson who had a nice return the first time eludes Cox's tackle and gets out to the 38 yard line. Gerald Hayes the starting middle linebacker with the tackle and here's Jerry Punch. Miami may need some good news right now. They may just have gotten it. Uh, D.J. Williams there talking to Scott McGonigal, the head trainer for the University of Miami. It's a left ankle. They've taken the tape, the sock, and the shoe off his left foot. He is trying to walk, as you can see, not putting a lot of pressure on that ankle. As you take a look, now watch his left ankle. Watch it buckle under him as he falls right on top of the ankle and inverts it. 
He has been able to put some weight on it. They're going to try to retape it and get him back out next series, possibly. Michael? Okay, Jerry. First and 10, Miami. Now Jay Davenport, just a yard, meeting Gerald Harris from Patterson, New Jersey, the leading tackler, along with Brandon Williams, the man you see there, weak side backer for the Panthers. One thing that you're going to see Ken Dorsey do tonight, he's going to force the Pittsburgh cornerbacks to come up and respect the wide receivers, make them come up tighter. And until he sees that, I, in my opinion, if he, he will continue to throw underneath the simple throw to those receivers to make the corners come up. Darrell Jones in motion. Quick off the end was Knight. No flag is down. Davenport out of the backfield dropped it. Not Jay Davenport. Had the linebacker turned five different ways and was passed up. The guy that made that play was number 57, Brian Knight. He jumped on the snap count and got around McKinney, who's a much bigger football player. He outweighs Knight by 75 pounds, but he uses quickness. Brian Knight is from Buffalo, New York, 6'2", 240, and a terrific football player. Long back is Portis. Johnson, Sands, and Jones, the pass catcher. And Shockey, the tight end underneath. Portis releases. Right across the mark for first down at the 49. Remember, now there's Brian McKinney, number four, uh, 78, was beat the last time, but this time he just puts himself in real good position. Remember, the offensive line for Miami has not allowed one sack this year on Ken Dorsey. McKinney's so big, you try a spin move on him, oh. and you spin right back into him. Yeah. 6'9", <laughs> yeah. Plus, he's got the long arms yeah. to keep the defender away from him. And nice feet. Nice feet. Making a check here. There's the underneath stuff. High and incomplete. Trying to get it in the hands of Kevin Beard, the flanker, sophomore out of Plantation, Florida. There's Tory Cox, who's uh, had his presence felt in the first five minutes tonight. It's very obvious why Pittsburgh's trying to stay off the line. They, they respect the speed of the Miami Hurricane wide receivers, so they're giving themselves a cushion. And again, that's why, as a quarterback, Ken Dorsey will try to pick that apart, make them commit and then use that speed to go by them once they come up close to the line of scrimmage. But so far, Pittsburgh has a very good scheme. Beard in motion. They'll run Portis to the left, to the right, excuse me, and gain just a couple of yards. Good run pursuit by Brian Knight, the senior. This is something that Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator from Pittsburgh, wanted to see having a chance in second long to turn his defense loose and fly to the football. They're, the, they're small defense, but very aggressive. Kind of that blue-collar mentality where they work extremely hard, and now they put Miami in third and long. Rhodes, age 34. Young coordinators, both sides in this game. Third and eight, time for Dorsey. He's complete, trying to stretch it to the mark was Darrell Jones. Depends where they mark it, where the line judge's foot is. It will be a first down for Miami. Let me give you a point about well-coached football teams. There's a receiver, Daryl Jones, who goes down and knows exactly where the first down marker is. Goes a foot behind it, Kirk. Watch this. He knows exactly where it is. He goes one yard behind it, comes right back and catches it first down. A lot of receivers go seven yards when they need eight. That was perfect, wasn't it? Yeah, and he's, he's the leader of the wide receivers. He's a veteran. He's been around. He's learned from some great receivers that have come through the university. And he is now the guy that the young receivers turn to. And you're right, great instinct there to oh. find the first down run. First down, toss. Complete to Ethnic Sands. Made a man miss. Hoping to get a block downfield. Did not, but picked up a first down after a gain of 15. Saturday, college game day comes your way at 10.30 Eastern. You guys are Norman, Oklahoma bound. All right. <laughs> to enjoy wait. Chris Fowler. Talk about Nate Hibble, the Oklahoma quarterback, in advance of the Oklahoma-Kansas State noon kick Eastern on ABC. All access with LSU and Texas A&M. Tony Barnhart will be in Knoxville, Shelly Smith in Corvallis. You can see it. College game day from Norman, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, in case you weren't sure where that was on the promo panel. Kirk Circular for you. Thank you. <laughs> First and 10. A little play pass now. Uh-oh. 
breaking over the tight end, Robert Williams, but it's incomplete. Coverage is pretty good. Williams had a step for a second on Sean Robinson, but the left cornerback out of Ohio closed well. Do you know that that's the first time Dorsey's been hit tonight? Now, I know that that wasn't a sack, but they haven't been near him at all, Kirk. They really knocked him down that time, which is a good sign. Maybe, maybe oh, yeah. they can get a sack. Yeah. Well, they, that's that's the goal. Just yeah. try, even if you can't get the sack, try to let him know exactly. that you're coming after him and make him feel your presence. Sometimes that's as effective as a sack. Dorsey, six of nine passing in the first six and a half minutes. Clinton Portis, left side, waiting for his block, but it wasn't coming. And the pursuit came from Ramon Walker, Tory Cox in that secondary. I like the secondary for Pittsburgh. Fly around. The safeties are very active. Walker and Ponko love to come up and help out like we see across the country in college football. Safety is always active. And they're, they're very fortunate because they have corners in Torrey Cox and Sean Robinson who are athletic and can play man-to-man -man coverage from time to time. Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, said that number 25, Ramon Walker, could play for Miami. Now that is a compliment coming from your coach. Yes. Miami's converted all three prior third downs. In the game tonight, all the time for Dorsey. Two to five, Daryl Jones. How about being a quarterback in this offense and just all these throwing lanes and you never get on the ground? Uh, uh, you know what? They're, they're so balanced between the tight end and the receivers and the running backs. He spreads it around. Defensively, it makes it tough. You can't you can't lock in on one guy because he's Kenny's is, is smart enough to get back in in the pocket and make the proper read and find the open man in there. He did it again. And from time to time, you'll find him lean on Daryl Jones when it's crunch time there on third down. First and goal. And Portis is stopped at the three. Once again, the safety's fill will bring up second and goal. There's one interesting stat that I checked about the Miami team. We're talking about their great receivers. You know, we always talk about the speed states. Well, Miami has five receivers. Four of them from the state of Indiana, and the other one from, I mean, excuse me, Florida, the other one from Texas. I was going to say, they're going up to the Hoosier oh, State. Texas and California <laughs> yep. and Florida are the speed, speed states. Baby. They got all of their receivers from Florida or Texas. Two tight ends. They get to Najee Davenport trying to power to the goal line. Pulled back at the two. William Ferguson, the backup corner, or backup, uh, yes, quarterback, came in and helped make the play. Najee Davenport is technically the fullback. He's kind of grown into this fullback spot. Remember, he was a terrific running back a couple of years ago, tore his ACL last year, carried only 13 times. Uh, he is an incredible back. Not only can you line him up at the tailback, he obviously has shown he's learned how to block. 6'2", 242 pounds. He's a young man that will be playing on Sunday somewhere, and he catches the ball out of the backfield, too. Dorsey gives to Portis left side. Touchdown, Miami. Hard to stop these guys from the four on three snaps. And Portis busts it in for his second touchdown of the quarter. The thing that we recognized about this team coming into the game, watching film and just watching them over the course of the year and now seeing it in person tonight is how businesslike they are on offense. It's, it's not, oh, man, we came back and we answered. It's just like, all right, we scored. Let's get off the field and give the de defense a chance. They're, they're experienced and, and a veteran football team, and it shows in their emotions. And they love the left side. That Brian McKinney is just blowing everybody up because, again, he blocked Ryan Smith that time, and he weighs 95 pounds more <laughs> than Brian Smith. No wonder that guy McKinney Woo. is a football player, a senior from Woodbury, New Jersey. Woo. Basic thing, he's only been playing football for, you know, four years or oh, so. Still man. learning the game. Miami lining up for two-point conversion attempt. Pittsburgh took a timeout here. Well, we have the second. Let me show you the touchdown. They ran it over McKinney's side, the left side again. Watch the explosion coming off the ball right there. McKinney gets his block. And I tell you, the thing that impresses me so far is the offensive line comes off. They're big, but they come off real good. I said before that Art Keyhole, who's been there 20 years at the University of Miami, is one of the best offensive line coaches. Very tough and aggressive oh, yeah. guy, Kirk. You can tell his line. I think, I think the offensive line takes on his personality. Oh, yeah. the, the other thing is, when, when anytime you see an offense that has kind of that pro system, how often do you see it? It's balanced. They have the ability to hurt you running mm -hmm. and throwing. And as a defensive coordinator, it's tough to push the buttons on first, second, or third down because they can come at you in so many different ways. 
Given the timeout taken by Pittsburgh, uh, Miami has decided to bring the kicking team out. I question this 100%. Do you? Yeah, because with a total of nine on that right column, you're supposed to go for two. I mean, that's the card upstairs of the box. I don't know why, though, because now they got an extra point and still beats them. I don't understand that. I think they early. feel pretty think confident about their ability now. Oh, that is early, right? baby. That was a big deal. Watching the television. Got a long way to go. <laughs> Get the point. Mike and Ben have Ultimate TV from Microsoft, so on Sundays their place is Party Central. Protect your bishop. They can watch and record two channels at once. Hit pause. Go to the other one. So they don't miss any of the madness and mayhem. Did you see you put the king in jeopardy? They can even do replays in slow-mo. See now he's touched his piece. Once you touch your piece, you gotta use it. The direct TV receiver with Ultimate TV. It also works with football. Matt, you shouldn't have. I didn't. It's oh. for DirecTV Customer News, because this month we're getting into high-definition television. So now I can watch all that cool HD TV programming on DirecTV? Well, we need some popcorn. Whoa, let's tell everybody where to join us first. Okay. For an easy how-to on the basics of your DirecTV system. And the latest movies, events, and technology. It's DirecTV Customer News on Channel 201. I'm Tanya Memmi. I'm Matt Galan. Now, can I have my popcorn? Football Saturday at noon on ESPN. Legendary coach Joe Paterno looks to tie Bear Bryant's all-time wins record as Penn State fights to right the ship against Iowa. Touchdown! At noon on ESPN2, Montrell Lowe and the surprising Boilermakers tackle Minnesota. Penn State, Iowa at noon on ESPN. Purdue, Minnesota at noon on ESPN2. It all starts on ESPN at 10.30 Eastern with College Game Day, Saturday. Back at Heinz Field where the Hurricanes have moved up by six over Pittsburgh, uh, 13 to seven. Hello everyone, I'm Jerry Punch and DJ Williams, a star linebacker for the Miami Hurricanes, tried to come back a moment ago after being retaped, has now been taken into the locker room for x-rays on that left ankle. And the reason that's so significant is because the orthopedic surgeon for Miami and the president of the university both are stuck in Washington. Their flight to Pittsburgh tonight was canceled. They are sitting in the Washington airport watching this football game. That's John Uribe, who handles the Hurricanes and the Dolphins. He and the president, Thomas Jalela, watching from Washington. Michael? Well, we say hello to Dr. Uribe and Dr. Donna Shalala, president, University of Miami, the secretary of the Health and Human Services in the Clinton administration of the cabinet post. We say hello to them this evening as they watch along with you. Remember the rumor that she was going to bring Barry Alvarez with her. Remember that? That was a strong rumor. Dr. Shalala was the chancellor, University of Wisconsin-Madison, before moving to the Clinton administration. Tory Cox, I don't know what this plan is, but it's not working. Yes. Yes. Pittsburgh will start from its own nine. They try to do a reverse with R.J. English, but did not come off the chalkboard as planned. Well, actually, a long scoring drive, rare for Miami. It took almost five minutes. <laughs> Portis, one touchdown in the first two games, two touchdowns in the opening quarter tonight. This is interesting. This is typical Miami. Miami, get this stat. This is the stat of the year for me. Miami had 180 yards of total offense, scored the first five times against Penn State, and they had 180 in the first quarter. It's amazing. It is amazing. Watching that film again, the game two. Oh. That was a dominant performance. Well, it's good they called the dogs off in the second half. Yeah, you know, it was right. And the first down, you can't take a delay a game back at your own 10. Cannot do that. And David Priestley did. He was, thought he got the timeout called before the flag came down, but it did not. Well, remains first down. Walt Harris, the head coach who pulls all the offensive strings for this uh, Pittsburgh team. Gentlemen, we've seen three drives and three scores, but this is an important time for Pittsburgh because Miami answered the answer like you like to talk about, Lee. They gotta go 95 yards, forget about it. The difference in the teams right now is Kent Dorsey. It's now first and 15. Running out of the gun, Priestley hangs on to it and gains just a couple of yards to the seven yard line a lot of talk guys about the 19-day layoff for both teams both had a off weekend for last weekend when the games were canceled two weeks ago they had to work around a little bit 
don't see a lot of rust, at least in the first three drives from these teams. Darcy, no rust at all. Guy is no. magnificent. He's even better than advertised. The entire uh, Miami offense, oh. I think, is, is we're seeing very little rust. But Anthony Bryant, Antonio Bryant, up to this point, has not been involved yet. Let's find out if they can find a way to get him the ball. Priestley steps up on second and 13. He's going to take off and get to the 12-yard line. James Lewis, the strong safety from Piscataway, New Jersey, Priestley, was closing carrier. quick, and Priestley <laughs> hit the dirt in a hurry. You know, Priestley, the quarterback who was almost hit by Lewis, had an 85-yard touchdown run in Pittsburgh's win over East Tennessee State, and his teammates have been kidding him about his running ability in the preseason. He looks like another Michael Vick, and his teammates have given him the nickname Vanilla Vick. <laughs> after the 85-yard run. First touchdown scored in this new facility, by the way. Third and six. Their receivers are a lot all of, a lot of confusion. Priestley finds some space, and this pass is caught. Bryant's got to keep the first down yardage. He does to the 24-yard line. First catch of the year for Antonio Bryant. Now from first and 15, they picked up the first down. Mike, you mentioned a confusion, and right now David Priestley is running a no huddle, and he's trying to communicate to his wide receivers not only the play, but also the formations. Antonio Bryant working against Fitzgerald comes back to the football and then has enough athletic ability to get the ball back across to pick up that first down. They're going to move him around all night and try to find different ways to get him the ball if he can stay healthy. High snap, handed inside. To Marcus Furman to the 27 yard line. Marcus Furman was a wide receiver on the scout team, going to be redshirted. But after the problems running against South Florida, Walt Harris in this 19 day layoff went in search of running backs and brought number two from redshirt wide receiver to play in running back against number one in the nation. You see the running problems they had and why Walt was looking for running backs on campus. But last drive to open the game, they were impressive. 44 yards by the entire team, most of them coming from Raymond Kirkley. A shovel to Furman, ball is down. Whistles come in, flags come in. They say it's Miami ball, and it is. I thought that was a shovel pass, guys. Well, if he had control of the ball, yeah. it is now running play. We'll see what he says. It's an incomplete pass, not a fumble. That's okay, correct. Good. Okay. Hold no. up. On the offense. The penalty is declined. First down. Huh. It was a completed pass. A completed pass and, and then a okay. fumble. Ooh. Thank you, Coach. Well, that shovel pass looks like it is not a forward pass, but right now that's a forward pass, yeah. and then it turns into a run. He drops the ball. Once, once the the running back secured the football yeah. and it got knocked out of there, it became a fumble. Right. If, if he took two steps, and I'm not sure about that. First down run for Portis to the 25-yard line. Marker in here as well. Secure the ball. Two steps. Complete possession. Saw a situation exactly like this in our ESPN Sunday night game in Arizona. With the Broncos and the Cardinals. First, let's check the flag on this play. Probably going to be a holding call. The scary thing is, push this offense back, they still hold. They still have first down. Maybe. Ten yard penalty. Repeat. All right here is the shovel pass. Let's find out if he has it long enough. Remember, if he drops it right there, it's an incomplete pass. That's, that's a fumble. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's a right. You can definitely see from that angle he had the ball secured and then the two steps. Secure one, two, two ball out. Good call. Andrew Williams there on the strip, number 99. Thank you. First and 20 with three receivers and one back. Could not complete the outlet to Portis from the junior running back. Second and 20 coming up. We'll tell you what comes up this weekend on ESPN. Our Saturday night primetime game from Knoxville. Rohan Davey, heroic performance. Watch the end of it. LSU's 38-31 overtime win in Baton Rouge. Or Mr. Henderson in Tennessee. Chance for a little revenge in Knoxville style. 7.45 Eastern, our primetime game with Ron, Mike, and Adrian.
on ESPN right after the college game day scoreboard. Should be one of the better matchups this weekend in college football. A great weekend it is. Dorsey tosses intercepted. Zone coverage. And the INT for the Panthers, Brian Beneke. <laughs> Rhodes defensive staff out there. Well, we can say we saw it. You just don't very see this happen very often Panthers. from Ken Dorsey. Protection good. Just he just steps and throws, and he doesn't even doesn't even look to see Beinecke. I don't even think he saw him just sitting in the zone coverage. In our meeting yesterday, Paul Rhodes, the defensive coordinator, he said we got one chance in a million. If we can get him in third or second and long and get a break, we got a chance. That's exactly what happened. The penalty caused him to have a long yardage. That slowed him down and made long yards, and they stopped him. Careful, another delay of game here. They get it off. Hand off to Kirkley out of the gun, doing everything out of the shotgun. I can't remember a Pittsburgh snap under center here in this first quarter. He picked up about four there. We see this with the spread offenses all over, not only college football, even at the NFL. They're putting four, five, four or five wide receivers. And if you look at the Miami defense, what they're doing, they're spreading them all over the field. Miami has six defensive backs in the game right now. They have four defensive linemen and one linebacker. So they're spreading them all over the field, and then they're trying to take advantage of that by running inside against it. See if something opens up under the middle. High snap. He's got to get on it. Still loose. Canes have it. <laughs> Picked up in stride by Andrew Williams, who was smelling the goal line. Well, here's an interesting stat. It fits in here perfectly. Miami has forced nine turnovers this year, two at the end of the half. And the other seven, they have scored 34 points and five touchdowns. And the, more no. like, how about the athletic move by Andrew oh. Williams? <laughs> Incredible six four lead for his size. 6'4", 255, just kind of scooped it, bent over. I'll tell you what, it, for, for games down the road, that's the thing that Miami hasn't had since you go back to the early 90s. Defensive ends that could dominate a game, they have that this year. Pittsburgh's offense has turned it over twice now. Giving Miami great field position here in the red zone. Dorsey pucks it and throws it for Johnson. Touchdown, Miami. Well, hello. They've now had it eight times and scored six touchdowns. <laughs> A little stat for your information. You know, thank you, Lee. Yeah, yeah. By the way, how about how they, how they attacked right after the turnover? They went to the end zone, and the thing you have to appreciate is the hands of Andre Johnson goes up and over the smaller corner and doesn't use the chest or the pads, simply the hands to secure the football. That was the first good pass and hold on extra the point. The Seavers adds it to so Chad Reed's bad snap that Priestley couldn't hang on to. Becomes a Miami offensive opportunity. Dorsey intercepted last time. This time, one play. 18 yards to Andre Johnson. Number one now leads by 13. They run out again? State Farm agent here in Montpelier. For a one-stop light town, we do get our share of accidents. When somebody has an accident, it's unsettling enough. The last thing they want to deal with is calling 1-800 and put in your 12-digit number. That's not very personal. Over 16,000 State Farm agents. Our rates for car insurance are very competitive. It's no accident. They insure more cars than anyone else. This is my town. Hi, Jasmine. When I told my agent I was playing fantasy sports, he got the wrong idea. I like it. Enjoy the show. <laughs> I would never do that. My fantasy league, unlike sports, is just good fun. I get the latest scores, player stats, even breaking news. Whatever you're into, dig into it deeper, unlike us. Uh, Sixers will kick off for Miami. 
back at Heinz Field, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, home of the Panthers and the Pittsburgh Steelers of the NFL. There's an NFL looking team out there in white and green called the Hurricanes. And Miami leading 20 to 7 here, late first quarter. Todd Seavers kicking. Miami's given up a couple of long kick returns. One to Torrey Cox earlier to Penn State in the first game. Torrey Cox ridden out of bounds at the 39-yard line. A fabulous block was thrown by Amir Purifoy of Pittsburgh to set up the 36-yard return. Going back to the touchdown by Miami, you can see that the big advantage with the height, you have Andre Johnson at 6'3 and Torrey Cox at 5'10. Not only does Johnson go up and make the catch, but it's the way he secured the ball strictly with the hands. They think Andre Johnson will be the next great receiver here at Miami. After almost exclusively working out of the shotgun and a botch snap and a few high ones before that, Pittsburgh will work from under center. Well, thinking that Brian Anderson moved, Miami tried to draw attention to the false start and succeeded. To the snap, false start. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Now, Walt Harris is a tactician, very exact, but his offense has really self-destructed after that first drop. Good sloppy, putting the ball on the ground, penalties. Just right now, it's got to be driving him crazy inside because he is such a perfectionist as an offensive mind. And you combine the rust of the 19-day layoff with the adrenaline of knowing you have to play a perfect game to stay in the game. It's very difficult for Pittsburgh. First and 15. Nowhere to hide. Brought down by Cornelius Green, the senior from Houston, Texas. They rotate the D linemen, and when the coverage is good, they get better. Speaking of defensive linemen, you know, we talk about everybody that got great speed playing on defense. Here's an interesting stat. Of the top eight defensive linemen from the University of Miami, seven of them are from the state of Florida, and Cornelius Green is from the state of Texas. Again, they go to those speed states to find those guys that can run. Green, the defensive rookie of the year on this team, started the last five games last year and came up with three sacks. Second and 24. They try the inside handoff out of the gun again with Kirkley. And he's pulled to the 44 by James Lewis. Kirkley, the ball carrier. The last play, Lady, you talked about the speed of the ends. I, I think it had as much to do with the coverage providing the sack as anything. And that's the thing. They're mixing up the coverages. You think about Miami, you right away, you think of the speed, you think they must play man, man to man every play. Actually, they're pretty conventional. They'll sit back and play zone. They'll mix in some man. But right now, they're, they're kind of toying with David Priestley, making him recognize different coverages. And I think it's confusing him. And it's allowing that defensive pressure to get to him. Third and 15, the guy at the top of the screen is Antonio Bryant, the Bolitnikoff Award winner from last year. Beasley looks that way. Bryant couldn't hang up. What a spectacular interception by Ed Reed, the free safety. A one hand going down to the ground grab. Third turnover of the quarter. You wonder why Miami's a great football team. A lot of it has to do with the experience, but also a lot of it has to do with this Great recognition by this secondary. How about ooh, they waved it off? They, they did just wave close. it off. The official came yeah. in from the other side. Yep. Miami's offense was coming on the field. The pit defense was coming out. And then the last official to be heard from came in and waved it off. Good, very good job by them. Yep. Good. That hit the ground. Good That's call. a good call. Yep. You know, three of the four, you talk about experience, three of the four of those defensive backs are seniors. I mean, that, that, you can't coach that kind of experience. And Philip Buchanan, the junior, might be the best of them all. <laughs> Penalty markers down as there was movement up front. That was bizarre. You saw Ken Dorsey leading the offense on, licking his chops. He had the ball again in Pittsburgh territory. The Panther defense was slowly walking on the field. And this one official is uh, incomplete, guys. I was right there with him. Let's go. Go on the other way. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. It goes from 4th and 15 to 4th and 10.
Andy Lee, the sophomore from South Carolina, is Pittsburgh's punter. Averages 43 yards thus far this season. Twists one in the air. Taken on the hop by Philip Buchanan. Twirling to the 38, where he is smacked to the ground by Nick Cole, backup linebacker. 34-yard punt, 12-yard return. Here's our ESPN.com question of the night. Was it Jim Kelly in the late 70s? Bernie Kosar, 82 to 84. Vinny Testaverde, the next one in line. Or Steve Walsh, who followed immediately. Or Craig Erickson, who ended the decade. Or Gino Toretta, who bridged the 80s and 90s. That man Ken Dorsey has talked about as maybe the best potential quarterback in Miami. But just the guys who've been through at ESPN.com, log on and vote. Who was the best of the bunch in college? Dorsey is chased and throws incomplete. Andre Johnson and Larry Coker tried to convince the side judge, but could not. Had a good job there by Pittsburgh's Brian Knight getting in there, trying to disrupt the timing with Ken Dorsey. I, you know, they've only played three games the Miami Hurricanes. And I know it's early in the year, but Pittsburgh doing a, a good job of at least pressuring Dorsey, but they're hurting him in different ways. And he usually gets rid of the ball pretty quickly with their speed, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's tough to get to him. After the incompletion, second and ten canes here in the final minute. Portis tried to seek back to the line of scrimmage. A nice job of filling by Benneke, the linebacker made the interception on the well, two drives ago before Miami's touchdown pass. They would li I'd like to see psychologically what would happen in a pit team if they could ever stop Miami. You know, if they could stop, they haven't stopped it yet. Well, that's all right. Penn State never stopped it. No one's ever stopped it. But if, if they could ever get stopped once, maybe the crowd would get back in the game. Here, they need, they need to stop it. Yeah. One time. So this is their chance. Just third and nine. Third. What Paul Rose said. Needing to get to their own 49 to keep the drive alive, the Canes. Plenty of time. Look at that. It's like seven on seven. Portis, first down into Pittsburgh territory at the 46. It's unfair. It's unfair. You know what they do? They basically, it's third and nine. You think, okay, third and, line is, third and nine is typically a long conversion for most teams. They just clear out all the receivers. They take all the defensive backs, and they use their, their running backs in the passing game. And they think, you know what? Our running backs are talented enough and athletic enough. If we get a one-on-one -on -one matchup with a linebacker against our running backs, including Najee Davenport and Clinton Portis, who's going to win that nine times out of ten? Mm -hmm. They know they are, and that's what they did. They just cleared out the receivers, took the secondary with them, dumped the ball underneath to the back. Nick Cole, the linebacker who made the special teams tackle before, shaken up. Speaking of hitting the receivers, but did you notice one thing about Dorsey I've watched so far? Every time he places the ball, it's in the perfect position for the guy to catch it with his hands. And turn up, Kirk, you ever notice? He puts the ball exactly where he wants to almost every single time. Pittsburgh had a very impressive scoring drive on Miami, but they also had two turnovers, and Miami made him pay. Two touchdown runs for Cordes, one pass for Dorsey. After one, 20 to seven Miami on College Football Thursday night. Well, you look across the Allegheny River to Heinz Field here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. What a gorgeous place that is. Golden Triangle down to the bottom right corner of your screen and on back from Mount Washington's side, just across the Fort Pitt Bridge. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Start the second quarter, number one in the nation, Miami, leading 20 to 7. Dorsey looking long for Kevin Beer. Incomplete. Good coverage there. The safety support from Ramon Walker. Those of you just joining us on College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. Here's our game track. Ken Dorsey has been intercepted for 120 yards, and that touchdown to Andre Johnson. Clinton Portis has also caught two passes for 25 yards, plus what he's done running the football. Well, the Pittsburgh offense can't get things going here in the early going. 62 yards total offense and two big turnovers that have hurt him early in the going here in this game. Big East opener for Pittsburgh. Miami beat Rutgers 61 to nothing. Clinton Portis stopped by Walker. 
And then the rest of the D comes through like Gerald Hayes from Patterson, New Jersey. Third and long coming up again. Here's Jerry. Guys, Miami's junior running back, Clinton Portis, who you just see right here a moment ago, proved that patience is a virtue. In 1999, he led the Hurricanes in rushing. Last year, he labored in virtual anonymity as a backup to James Jackson. But this year, on his 20th birthday, he got the call. He was the man. And how did he respond against Penn State? He rushed for 94 yards in the first quarter, 136 in the first half, and 164 for the football game. Patience a virtue for Clinton Portis. Michael, most schools, Jerry, wanted him to be a defensive back. I think he's found a home at running back. Third and 11 toss. Incomplete. Long, strong throw to the wide side for Daryl Jones, but Shante Spencer broke it up. Well, they finally stopped him. Well, long throw there for oh, Corson. Yeah. Put it, put it on the money. Doesn't have that world-class drop back big arm, but he's accurate. And he gets rid of the football on time. And if you do that, you're going to be fine. Well, the caps on the punter doesn't get much action. No. <laughs> From Rock Springs. Oh, block! Huge block! Pittsburgh with an opportunity. Tory Cox has been the special teams king tonight. From Miami, Northwestern High School made the play. You mentioned... You, know, you look at the, the punt team, Capshaw doesn't get much, many, many reps. How about the punt team in general? Here, you're going to have Cox come right up the middle. Nothing fancy. They overload one side, and once Cox comes free, nice job of finding the football and knocking it straight down. Well, Ray Clinton almost passed him when he blocked I know. It. Wow. I know. Toy it's, Cox, it's I met, mentioned again, the young man from Miami is obsessed. He wants to really play well. First time Miami's had a punt block since the Syracuse game back in 1998. Rod Rutherford, the sophomore from Western PA, is in at quarterback. And the handoff to Kirkley is minus two yards. Rutherford, the sophomore, is 6 of 14 passing this year. He is the better running threat than Priestley. Actually, by Priestley's lack of attention to detail in the preseason, Rod Rutherford moved his way into the decision process for Walt Harris. I don't think Priestley was ever in danger of losing the starting job, but Rutherford elevated himself and is getting himself on the field because of that work. Second and 12. Too slow developing against this defense. Mm -hmm. I think Rod Rutherford was on the sideline watching that Miami defense too much because that time he was pitter patting wasn't it you said you were nice and said slow, slow developing <laughs> what now just watch his feet and you can see everything right here he's been on the sideline watching these guys get bobbed now watch him he comes around with a nice option but oh we're putting it up it, 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 it wasn't that fast <laughs> they need to get to the 25 for the first down miami had 12 defensive players on the field just snuck one off plenty of time because pitch adjusting the play Rutherford's first throw of the night is incomplete. And Lamar Slade cutting down the seam. Ryan's on the outside. And Antonio hasn't seen the ball yet. So after the block punt, Walt Harris making the decision here to kick it away or to go for it from the 35. He's going to try to pin Miami back with a punt. Well, you hate to see that. A big turn of events, yeah. three and out, punt team. Interesting time. You want to get Rutherford on the field for some series, but an interesting time to go for it with momentum and a quarterback who has not played. But the one snap. Andy Lee's kick went straight up and straight right. That may be 10 yards if it's lucky. No, it's less than 10. It's five. It's four. That's a four-yard punt. Four-yard punt. ESPN, ESPN2, down south in Athens for Arkansas, Georgia on ESPN2. 6.30 Eastern to start your college football Saturday, and you can hit the remote back-and-forth button for good SEC action. LSU and Tennessee, 14 against 8. Back and forth between Athens and Knoxville, Saturday night on ESPN2 and ESPN. You're home for college football. Big Ten doubleheader on ESPN and ESPN2 at noon Eastern as well. 
That's movement on Miami's tight end, Jeremy Shockey. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Heavily penalized. The only criticism you can have of Miami, 24 in the first two games. We talked to their coaching staff. They said, you know, the aggressive penalties you accept early in the year, but it's it's the mental mistakes, jumping off sides, things like that that, that just drive a coaching staff crazy. I tell you what, with the coach staff problems, they have outscored their opponents 94 to 74 this week. It's hard to get the guys' attention. First down throw for Ken Dorsey. There's the tight end redeeming for the penalty. Right, thank you. Shockey picks up 24. 94 to 7, they about done it. Mike, and here's let me tell you something about that as a coach. When you win a 94, 94 to 7 before tonight, your team <laughs> is not going to pay attention to do much of the same. Miami needs to be challenged one time, then we'll find out how great football team they are. So you're not sold yet, huh? No, I'm sold that they're okay. a great football team, but they need to really be challenged by a really good football by team. By who? I don't think that maybe the Steelers. <laughs> okay. We, I'm can, just we curious. can look at their schedule later, guys. Okay. We're just right. three minutes in second quarter. Gerald Hayes is having a very active and good night for the middle backer spot. Just made a play there on Clinton Portis. And it'll bring up third down. We sat in that room yesterday with the Pittsburgh defensive players. Their eyes lit up. They're excited because they have an opportunity to play against the number one team in the country, and they are active. This defense is derived to allow the linebackers to get up and make a play. Gerald Hayes, the inside linebacker, is really the anchor of this defense, and he's flying all over the place here early in the game. Minus three. Todd Harriet. Dropped him three yards. Very good performance by the defensive end. How'd you like that speed of Claude Harriet? Guess where he's from? Oh, Lee, I'd say somewhere below the Mason-Dixon line. I'd say Belle Glade, Florida. You gotta go to the Florida, California, Texas to get speed players. And that's where that kid came from. Harriet was the Palm Beach County Defensive Player of the Year. His high school went 23 and 2. Needing to get to the Panther 45. They go inside, handoff with Portis, who will walk to the first down and finally get pulled down at the 28-yard line by Tory Cox. Well, just 31 yards on third and a bunch. Well, you're expecting pass here on third and long. It's one of the things that they have, they're first able to do Miami. because of the offensive line and because of the experience. They're going to pull Raji Razuli, the left guard, pull him around to the other side, pick up a block, and there's nobody there. I mean, not only do you get great blocking, but because of the alignment of the receivers all to the left, there's nobody on the back side. And once he gets a couple blocks up front, he's in the open field, and he's able to make somebody miss first down. Miami 7 of 8 on third down conversions. Dorsey's looking for the end zone. Kings back to the near side to Ethnic Sands incomplete. The running back going down the middle was covered well by the linebacker. Here's Jerry Punch. As we talked to Pittsburgh defensive coordinator Paul Rhodes, he told us if you break down the hurricane offense, they don't have many, if any, weaknesses. But if you look long and hard, you can find something with a piece of chalk on a blackboard you can attack them with. The problem is physically being able to get it done. That's what they're struggling with tonight. They can attack them with the chalkboard, which they're doing here in between possessions, but physically on the field getting it done, that's another story. Michael? Good defense. Ten starters back from last year. They finished top 30 in the nation. Second down run. The dancing Portis. Look at those feet. Oh. He's finding the space. Search through the hole. Gains about seven. Third and three coming up. I got to tell you about Clifton's Portis. We did the uh, Virginia Tech. Tech Miami game, and Miami quit. Dorsey looked terrible. Everybody else. And that Clinton Portis was a great football player that night. And I ran for the first time in my career off the field and shook his hand and said, "Let me tell you something, Clinton Portis. You could play for me anytime." He was a freshman. He was the only player on that Miami football team that didn't quit. He's a great player, that guy right Doc, there. Doc talked about his patience. It's oh. been tough for him at times here. Third and four, Shockey first down to the 13. Two catches for the tight end on this drive. That one was 10 yards. Just about any linebacker that matches up with Jeremy Shockey is going to be in trouble because whether it's a strong safety who's going to lack the size or a linebacker who's going to lack, lack the quickness, 
he's going to be able to be a, a, a very good receiver on third Just down. Inside, Give him the option route 14. to cut to the outside or move to the inside. And I'm telling you, it's very difficult to match up with Jeremy Shockey. 6'6", 246 pounds, and runs a 4-6. From the 14, it's been all Portis in the backfield. He gains about six yards to the eight-yard line. It will be second down. Finishing the story about Jeremy Shockey. Remember, he was the guy that made that great touchdown catch How against Florida forget? State. How could I forget that? I don't forget that one. And not only that, he was a great player in junior college in Northeast Oklahoma. He's from Ada, Oklahoma. He's one of those guys that Miami goes out and picks up like Williams or like Shockey, comes out to be the player of the year from this junior colleges, and they get him. Second down pass. Incomplete, looking for Andre Johnson's would be second touchdown of the night. Shante Spencer from Woodland Hills High School here in Pittsburgh broke it up. Third down, they can get a first down at the four. Third and five at the Pittsburgh. Receivers, the Shockey line up for the tight ends at the bottom of your screen on the line. He releases to the right. Underneath to Darrell Jones. Ball came through. <laughs> Recovered by Martin Bibla, the senior right guard from Pennsylvania. Where he recovered will be shy of the first down. Field goal situation for Miami. Jones fighting to pick up the first down, and as he extends himself, the ball just pops out. How Pittsburgh doesn't come up with this. Oh, it bounced off Walker's shoulder pad, and shoulder pad and bounced back to the Miami offensive line. Field goal try for Seavers. And Todd, the junior from Iowa, connects on the field goal. A penalty marker is down, so let's check the flag. From body language. Well, let's see. Neither team looks very happy about it. <laughs> the dead ball. Personal foul. On the kicking team. Extra point is good. Penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Shockey's the one giving an explanation to his head coach, Larry Coker, so it sounds like it was him. The field goal is good. 24 yards from Todd Seavers. His seventh of the year. And Miami now leads 23-7. That's the Great Hall here at Heinz Field, honoring the Pittsburgh Panthers right outside of it's a good seat, section 106 and 107, and then on the other side of the Great Hall, right in that area there, honoring the Pittsburgh Steelers as well. This facility right in downtown Pittsburgh, in the old parking lot for Three River Stadium, is the home for both teams. And I can't tell you how classy the Steeler organization is. You look around this stadium, it's hard to see the word Steelers. This is really a University of Pittsburgh home field for an NFL stadium. And I don't know of any other NFL team right. that would have been that giving to the Pittsburgh Panthers to a college. Because of the flag, kickoff came from the 20. And Tory Cox certainly gets about a 10-yard return. That is some kind of coverage by the Miami Hurricanes to the 24. Well, the Pittsburgh Panthers were at Pitt Stadium forever, 1925 through 1999. Played at Three Rivers in the final season last year as this building was going up right next door and moved into this 65,000-seat facility. They all have chair backs compared to the 132 seats that had a back at Pitt Stadium. It's a slightly different viewing experience for the fans here. David Priestley and Rod Rutherford have shared, shared quarterbacking duties. It is Priestley back in. Fans are getting very anxious when he had just plays. Inside handoff again. It's been the running option A1 tonight. Bruno Kirkland gets seven yards. Raymond Kirkland stopped by Jonathan Vilma, sophomore out of Coral Gables, where the Miami campus is. We talk about NFL players from the Steelers. Not for one of the luxury boxes. It is Steeler quarterback. Cordell Stewart and on the bus wearing the tiger hat all right Jerome Bettis giving me the old English D yeah. <laughs> running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers 
The Steelers and Panthers train at the same facility. As a matter of fact, the practice fields are right next to each other. What a recruiting advantage it is for this program. Kirkley gets stopped for a yard. Another tackle for Vilma. We've been around the country, and I'm not so sure that Pitt didn't go from the worst to the best quicker than any place I've ever been. Kirky, we watched. There's the practice fields, right? Yep. The facility, right? There's the indoor practice facility. What do you think? Was that? I, I agree with you. We, we've seen some some great facilities over the last uh, five or six years because it seems to continue to change. But this is an interesting uh, mix-up because you have the NFL involved with a college team, and as Mike indicated, the Steelers have been first class with their understanding of the importance of uh, Pittsburgh football. Not only with the Steelers, but also at the college level with the uh, with the Pittsburgh Panthers. Rutherford third and one run does get the first down. That facility is so impressive because you have college players who are trying to learn how to be pros in the future. And all they have to do is look next door. And if they want inspiration, all they have to do is look in the parking lot. It looks like a showroom for the Escalade SUVs in the parking lot out there. It's also an advantage for Walt Harris and his staff to get to pick the brains of all those good Pittsburgh Steeler coaches. Tremendous advantage. And not only that, you know how Western Pennsylvania high school football is. You give Walt Harris time with these facilities and with his background as a coach, you'll have Pittsburgh not only competing in the Big East, but I think they have a chance to be a very, very good team and a top 25 type team year in and year out. The pass by Priestley intended for Antonio Bryant is incomplete. It will be second and ten. And guys, Bryant has been quiet. Hasn't really seen much of the ball here. Thrown his way, but for one time in this game. If you're not familiar with the Antonio Bryant story, not highly recruited by a lot of Division I programs, from Miami, his choices were Pittsburgh and Louisville. He chose Pittsburgh. And last year in his sophomore season won the Bolitnikov Award that goes to the best receiver in the country. Second and ten. Kirkley inside gains about four or five yards. William Joseph, the left tackle out of Edison High School in Miami, made the play. Guys, can they effectively run the ball out of this shotgun all night? That's all they've been doing for the most part. It's all about matchups for, for Pittsburgh's offense. And Anytime you have four wide receivers in the game, you're hoping that the defense will recognize that and, and, and really pay attention to the passing game and gives you an opportunity to run the football because the defense is spread out all over the field. I think they're going to try to stick with it until obvious passing downs. Priestley throw is incomplete. Trying to get R.J. English, the senior, who's big enough at 6'3", 215 to get a little positioning on 5'11", Philip Buchanan, but did not succeed. Philip Buchanan was a nice-looking athlete. The thing I liked about that, did you notice how he came around with his left hand and knocked it down without getting pass interference? That's a good-looking football player that's well-coached. Philip Buchanan made the good defensive play. Now goes back to receive Andy Lee's punt. That better than the last four-yard punt from the 23. Buchanan found space. Then ran into all the blue shirts and pulled down at the 35. After a 34-yard punt, the Canes will take over against the Pittsburgh Panthers, who 25 years ago were number one in college football. Circuit City presents the big picture. A 12-yard touchdown run by quarterback Pete Gonzalez at the end of the third quarter did more than help Pittsburgh to a 21-17 victory over Miami in 1997. It helped turn a program around. There had been no bowl games and six consecutive losing seasons. The Panthers improved to 3-1 and one as Gonzalez, a Miami native, added two touchdown passes for the Panthers, who beat the Hurricanes for the first time in nine tries. Pitt would go on to its first bowl game in eight years. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for all your help. It's my job. Wow. Honey, can we start now? Yes. Yes, we can. We know how you feel, and that's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Sweetie. Yeah, just put that anywhere. I remember 20 years ago, how it turned the racing world upside down. First, by introducing a race car with quattro all-wheel drive, and second, by having a woman drive it.
college football Saturday. A big SEC rematch pits LSU against John Henderson and the Vols. LSU, Tennessee, 745 Saturday on ESPN. ESPN's Thursday Night College Football is brought to you by Audi and by Original Coors. Nothing beats an original. That was one of the three first quarter Miami touchdowns. Ken Dorsey to Andre Johnson, 18 yards. Miami leads 23 to 7 as Dorsey goes to the air again, and the pass is dropped by Kevin Beard, the sophomore flanker. Dorsey's pass intended will bring up second down. He had a couple of plays where he had opportunities for a big game. But we told you about the SEC nighttime. Joe Paterno tries to equal the Bear again. Going against Montreal Lowe and company will be Minnesota. You got Big Ten options on ESPN, ESPN2. Penn State, Iowa at noon Eastern. Joe trying to break the Bear. Or you can watch Montreal Lowe and that good defense for Purdue go up against Minnesota. Our Big Ten doubleheader on Saturday early. Najee Davenport is the intended receiver. Step for step with him was Conco. Or rather, Beinecke, the linebacker, but a penalty mark is down. Back on the offensive side of the ball. And it's a hold on the Kings. As good as Miami has looked at times, the, the small penalties have really cost him in the drives where they haven't scored. This drive, Quentin Portis and Jeremy Shockey, the starting. Running back in tight end, get a breather. Chance for the Miami wide receivers to step up a little bit. And they'll be uh, called into action here on this second and long after the sixth Canes penalty of the night. That's Daryl Jones, the senior leader of this group, coming back off a knee injury here tonight. It'll be third and long after a gain of about four for Willis McGahee, the freshman out of Miami Central High School. You know, we talk about the Miami Hurricane wide receivers, and think about who they lost. Santana Moss, taken 16th overall in the first round by the Jets. Reggie Wayne, bottom of the first round by Indy. And then the seventh round, Andre King, who was the third receiver. But you take Moss and Wayne, and they lost a lot of receiving production. They've kind of taken upon themselves as a group in the spring and summer to not be the weakness of this offense. Everything else is back except the loss of those great receivers, and they're on a mission to show that they can get it done as a group as receivers. This is a screen blown up by Amir Purifoy from Homestead, PA. Willis McGahee lost seven yards, punting time. Well, they found out one way to, to help slow down Miami. Give him a 10-yard penalty. If it's first and 25, you can stop him. First and 10, forget about it. Fourth and 23. Punt block earlier for Freddie Capshaw. Up the middle this time. He gets it away. What a timed hit. Antonio Bryant hung on. I'm not sure how. Sean Taylor. Great hit on Bryant. Pittsburgh ball at its own 41. I noticed one thing about Miami defensive backfield. They got there's Edward Reed, that good guy number 20 behind him, Sean Taylor, 6'3, 220, freshman behind a senior. Every single senior has a guy that's a sophomore or freshman behind him. They know how to build a program. And you don't see hits like that because of that two yard halo rule. And he's outside of the halo. That was such so timing play. It's the first time we've seen that on Thursday night in <laughs> years. David Priestley, the senior from Los Alamitos, California. Another bad snap picked up by Kirkley. Good awareness by the freshman to keep a busted play going forward and a pickup of four yards. The Chad Reed, the junior, is having problems with the shotgun. Second and six. Antonio Bryant has not been off the field tonight, trying to come back from the ankle injury. Still, he's only caught one pass for 11 yards and hasn't seen much thrown his way. Inside handoff. Kirkley does a wonderful job to keep pedaling forward and actually gain a yard. Jerry.
Ice uh, Pittsburgh center Chad uh, Reed is having trouble with the snap. One of the reasons is he needs to have surgery on his right arm, right shoulder. They were going to do it during the year. He's wearing two braces, can barely move that right arm. That's the one he snaps with here in the shotgun. You can see he's struggling tonight. Tough order to go all shotgun with a guy who's got a bad shoulder. Third and long five. Protection's there. It's deflected. And let's see if this one. Oh, it's incomplete. Looks like Marquise Fitzgerald, the senior, scooped it up before it hit the ground. But the umpire turned around and said no catch. Three and out. Again. Yeah, and I know Antonio Bryant's trying to come back from an injury, but you, you're third and six. You have to find a way to get a matchup to get him the football. And here they try to get him the ball, but between the protection and the throw, you, you, you just can't afford to lose an opportunity. When you think you have the best receiver in college football, find a way to get him the ball and I tell you, they can't protect. The reason they're running all night tonight is because they can't protect when they're trying to throw. Hold on, Andy Lee. Did get it away and got away a beautiful kick. Buchanan caught it inside the 10. Usually a no no. He gets it out to the 24. A penalty marker is down. Is a and a second one now comes in. That was a longer than expected kick, so Buchanan had some room to get it out from inside of the 10. Bosnick and Gonzalez made the tackle. And Miami will have a long field to deal with. Two and 17 before halftime. Number one of the nation, Miami, leading by 16. Looking for this week's top choices in premium movies and sports? Take a shortcut. Turn to DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week for previews and information around the clock. That was good. Back to back. Watch DirecTV Movies this week and DirecTV Sports this week on channels 212 and 500. Don't miss the best in movies and sports from DirecTV. Introducing the F.A. Barkley Card Premiership. Elite Clubs. English Premier League is get your week by week Premier League action on pay per view. Like a lot of organizations, ESPN was having trouble with their carpet, so they had me install a more natural surface. This grass we install is the best. It's a good Bermuda. No hot water on that, okay? Yeah, yeah. That'll set the stain. It lays down very, very pretty. Still to come on Sports Center the rest of the night in the NBA. Wherever you are, I mean, there's nothing more beautiful than grass. Glad you joined us for College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. From the city of Pittsburgh, we're right downtown, Heinz Field. Here along the Allegheny River, Walt Harris's Pittsburgh team. In his first year, upset Miami on Thursday Night Football. Trying to do the same tonight. Willis McGahee back in the game in a big hole. Flag down as McGahee surges to the 35. Let me check the flag. Miami's penalties continue to mount. There's no foul on the play. The back was moving sideways. First down. Well, we have a chance to check in Sports Center in game Keystone Light halftime report preview. And here's Dan Patrick. Dan. Thank you, Mike. Coming up on the Keystone Light Halftime Report, Chris Fowler will recap the game you are uh, broadcasting. Also look ahead to this weekend's matchups and bring you hidden videos. We'll also update the night in baseball. Braves are losing, Phillies are losing, Mets are winning. That's the Keystone Light Halftime Report, Mike.
All right, Dan seeing a bit. Dan and Chris Berman tonight on Sports Center after the game. Wow. Big hitters. Big, big time. Big night. Big number, night. Hey, we're big number one Miami. Here. Go Mets. Big hitters. 18. Go Mets. Yeah. That's great to hear. Dorsey play pass. Looking. High throw. Incomplete for Andre Johnson. You know, speaking of baseball, just a few steps from here down the down the way along the Allegheny River as well as PNC Park, the Pirates' new home. And they played their last home game yesterday. And uh, Doc, myself, Kirk, and our producer, Tom Archer, snuck in for an inning. We got to see... Did you? Did you have a hot dog? Oh, you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Did you see Sammy Sosa walk? You saw Sammy. We waited for Sammy to hit, and they walked him intentionally. <laughs> Sixth That's inning, seventh inning. That's when we packed the bags. We left. Fan appreciation night. Sammy cups up. Boy. Second intentional pass of the night. We're out of there. That's right. <laughs> Willis McGahee, four yards to the 39. Yeah, Lloyd McClendon, the manager for the Pirates. Everybody wants to see Sammy. It's the last home game. Let us see Sammy. And what and they, happens? They walked him. They walked, they walked him. him intentionally, and he, you know, they're boobers. It's the last home game, beautiful new park, and they boot him. And he should have. Yeah, it's a gorgeous park. Oh, oh yeah. How about the was, footlong? The what foot time was that? Long. What time was that? That was about 10 o'clock. We called you your room, Lee. I was Have sleeping for two hours by then. I had my pajamas and my white socks on by 7. You shut it down. I shut it down. You, you didn't even come to, you came to Primanti Brothers with us for that great Pittsburgh Yeah, segment. but I didn't eat one. I'm on a Did diet. You know you're looking good, Ben. I'm yeah. feeling good. Look good. Third and five. Dorsey's pass to Ethnic Sands is right at the mark. It all depends on the spot. And these very knowledgeable Western Pennsylvania fans are letting the line judge know they don't agree with his judgment. Have to bring it out and measure here. We talked about this before early in the game about the Miami receivers so well coached that they know exactly where that marker is, and they usually go one yard behind beyond it and come back that time he just stopped right at the marker I'd say he didn't make it by two inches what do you think give me a call I think he's short oh shoot that's three inches <laughs> well Miami players are saying go for it go for it the kicking team is coming on what would Mike Ditka do former Pittsburgh Panther great in the Pro Football Hall of Fame terrific end here all the Panthers who've had their numbers retired are on hand tonight to honor our ESPN colleague Mark May, whose number is going to be retired at halftime. Hugh Green and Mike Ditka, Bill Fraley, Marino's running around the court. Look at Ditka. He wants to hit something. Dorset. <laughs> what are you doing not going for it? Yeah. Right, Tony D is here. Yep. Yeah. Great players over the years. Another punch for Freddie Capshaw. This one tumbling out of bounds at the 14 with 51 seconds left. Well, as Dan told you, Sports Center in game, the Keystone Light halftime report is coming up. They will keep an eye on the pennant races. Some hidden video there as well. And Chris Rod and former Pittsburgh coach Mike Godfrey will preview the weekend as good a complete weekend as we've had to start the early portion of this season. Great games in every conference, really, this week. Then the ACC, North Carolina, North Carolina State, big, big rivalry. Georgia Tech, Clemson, yep. Big Ten. You got Michigan State and Northwestern and Evanston. Should be exciting. Michigan, Michigan, Illinois, Illinois, SEC, Mississippi State, and Florida, and Florida. LSU and Tennessee. There, there are some great games. Oregon State, UCLA, out of the Pac-10, and of course Kansas State, Oklahoma, the Big Twelve. It's a good thing game day is 90 minutes now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Let's it's break good. it down. Priestley, the quarterback, incomplete through the hands of Chris Wilson, the sophomore tight end from Lancaster, PA. David Priestley was at Ohio State and transferred. Really, Walt Harris was one of the main reasons that he decided to go to Ohio State when Walt was coaching the offense there. And when Harris got this opportunity at Pittsburgh, Priestley followed. Part-time starter, four games in 99, one game in 2000, but really a shoulder injury against Miami in 99. Short-circuited any hopes of uh, pushing John Terman for the bulk of the snaps in 2000. Shovel pass is secured by Kirkley, but goes nowhere. Whistle had blown before the ball came out. Well, Miami's got a couple of timeouts. Let's see if they force Pittsburgh into another snap here and take the timeout. And now it is stopped at the 31 second mark. Timeout Miami. 
And Larry Coker's team is going to try to try to put some pressure on Pittsburgh. Larry waited 23 years as an assistant in college. Larry Coker did before he got this opportunity. And you know what? He deserves it. He worked a lot of years, hard places. Every place he won, he went. They won, and he finally got his opportunity. And the players, led by Ken Dorsey, were the reason why he got this job. They all rallied around him. Good point. Right at the end of the recruiting yeah. period, Butch Davis was the man who they were looking for in the NFL. He went to the Cleveland Browns. And now the question came, who do we go get as a head coach yeah. so late in the recruiting process? Larry Coker kept all the recruiting fires going. And that impressed Paul D. Plus the players coming in saying we want him as our head coach. He is a, a player, players coach. The players love him. He's also uh, very happy with the staff that, that stayed with him. He said the familiarity between he and the staff and the players has helped with the cohesion of this season. We just saw Mark Stoops. You know about Bobby and Mike yeah. Stoops and the great Stoops family and coaching. Mark Stoops is now here, coming over from Houston. He's coaching the defensive backs here now at Miami and doing a great job. Third and 11, needing to get to the 24. Priestley, four of nine on the night. That pass is caught for a first down at the 25 by R.J. English. <laughs> 25 seconds left. Pittsburgh not going to put this one in the freezer. Going to keep at it here. Looks like movement on the left tackle, and it was. So this play will be whistled. Rob Petini moved. Going back to the Miami staff and Larry Coker, I think that he brought in Randy Shannon from Miami Dolphins as the defensive coordinator. I think that was a brilliant move. This is a tremendous young defensive coordinator. Prior to the snap, all start, offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. We've talked a lot about Larry Coker and the coaching staff, but a, a lot of the credit has to go to the players. Almost all these players were involved in that team last year that fell short in the BCS and lost to Washington out in Seattle early in the year. And that whole conversation and debate about Miami and Florida State and Oklahoma, these players are on a mission. And their, their focus and maturity this year has helped also with the transition of the new coaching staff. A very young staff as well. Lee mentioned Shannon, oh, the defensive coordinator, he's 35. The defensive coaches are 34, 39, and 34. Very young for a college staff. What a catch by Kirkley. You don't want to be loose with the ball down there with Miami's athletes. I think well, Pittsburgh will squeeze in a timeout here with five seconds to go. Second and 13 coming up. Speaking of uh, Miami, there's a man who is synonymous with Miami and has his number retired here at Pittsburgh. Dan Marino. He's here to help honor Mark May at halftime as well. Be right back. Final four seconds here at Pittsburgh. And the Panthers will be safe and run it with Kirkley to the 29-yard line. And that will do it for the first half. Panthers had 44 yards in their first possession, 56 since then. Ken Dorsey was pretty good in the first half. Did throw the one pick, but has a touchdown pass. Clinton Portis has run for two at the break. Miami, number one in the country, leads 23 to 7. Now the Keystone Light Halftime Report, Sports Center in game, Dan Patrick. Thank you, Mike. Well number one team in the nation, led by Ken Dorsey, their quarterback, coming on the field for the second half. Miami 23, Pittsburgh 7. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City continues from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstby. Coach is gone to the sweater. It's damp here tonight. Yeah, well, you know, the AARP guys have got to be careful. Well, I got the jacket. I want to stay, you know, tough guy over here is yeah. uh, tough without guy. jacket. Tell me about that first half. I got the sense Pittsburgh had a chance, but you can't turn it over three times. The Canes are not the ones who need charity on the football field. Well, obviously, Miami did not bring their A game today. It's as obvious, but Pittsburgh cannot handle them, and Ken Dorsey's the difference between the two teams. 
I mean, he well, can play. I, I think he's the difference in their offense is clicking. When they get in trouble, it's because of their own penalties. Yep. But for Pittsburgh, they've got to come up with different ways to attack on offense. They've really been relying on the running game in the first half, and now time's beginning to run out. They're going to obviously open it up and try to get the ball downfield. This is a Pittsburgh team that lost to South Florida again, 35-26. Yeah. They were down 28-7 to in that game, but they look much better tonight. The problem is giving the opportunities to Miami. Only five first downs, two in the second quarter, and only 27 passing yards for Pittsburgh. Meantime, Miami has been, for the most part, balanced. Dorsey's missed a dozen passes. That's a little bit higher than uh, normal. Pittsburgh gets the ball to start the second half. Torrey Cox had some great kick returns in the first half. He'll take a knee. And the drive will start at the 20 with David Priestley. Our ESPN game track for those of you joining us here in the second half. Get you caught up in the first 30 minutes when Clinton Portis had a couple of touchdown runs. One of four yards and one from a yard out. Ken Dorsey has been phenomenal tonight. Touchdown and interception and leading this team in the first half to some scores. Well, Antonio Bryant's a great looking athlete. I think this is the only pass he's caught right here. Well, he picked it off almost. But let me tell you about a Bryant. You're right. He only has one catch for 11 yards. 11 yards. But he doesn't seem like he's trying hard enough to get away from these people. That's because of lack of practice. Bryant limited in practice during this 19-day delay because of an ankle sprain on a punt return. First down toss is complete. Across the 30-yard line was a first down. Marker came down after the grab by Chris Wilson, the tight end. It's back near the quarterback and looks like a roughing the passer penalty on Jerome McDougal. Roughing the passer on the defense. 15 yard penalty. And another first down. Now marks the ball close to midfield. McDougal's going to get there just a little bit late, and once you go to the head, pretty good chance the flag's going to come down and pick up 15 more yards after the play. That's just inexperience by McDougal. That's the eighth flag that you see on Miami. Here. We mentioned earlier, Larry Coker's team has been penalized 10 and 14 times in the first two games. That problem continues. <laughs> Senior David Priestley inside handoff to the freshman. And Raymond Kirker can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Jerry Punch was in the pit locker room at halftime. Doc, what'd you hear? Guys, a lot of coaching, a lot of teaching by Walt Harris and Paul Rhodes and the guys talking about execution, wrapping up on defense, executing the offense, but uh, a lot of emotion by Antonio Bryant and Torrey Cox. They divided the team in half. Antonio Bryant took the offense, Torrey Cox took the defense. The two Florida boys lit them up at halftime, talking about got to play with emotion, challenged their teammates to come out and play a second half. They both play at the same high school, Northwestern High School. Here's the underneath throw to Lamar Slade. 13th catch of the year for Lamar, whose brother Chris Slade has been an NFL standout for more than a half decade. First down, just a yard shy of it, actually. And Rod Rutherford, the backup quarterback, comes in in these third and short situations. Pittsburgh. At least it puts Pittsburgh in a position where they can try to pick up the first down and try to continue to move the stick by hitting that big pass here. Rutherford just looks for that opening to the left side. And he will be right at the mark. See where they spot it. And they'll measure. Well, if they don't make it now, he's definitely got to go fourth down. There's no, I mean, you don't get this close to keeping a first down. You got to go. No matter what the situation, he's got to go for it. Well, Pittsburgh on that first drive, Kirk, was very good. They came out, mixed it up, kind of caught Miami perhaps off balance by seeing this all shotgun look, the inside handoffs. Since then, why haven't they been able to keep that momentum going? Adjustments by Coach Shannon, the uh, defensive coordinator of Miami. They've been able to fix up the first down here, but Miami's made the adjustments. They're still sitting back with five and six defensive backs, but because they've seen this now, now these players are beginning to still respect the passing game, but not focus primarily on that. They're also recognizing the, the ability of Pittsburgh to run and they've shut it down. It also speaks well of the Pittsburgh offensive game plan. Yes. I mean, they had a long time to get this thing ready, and it looked like it was very well designed at the beginning of the game. 
Walt Harris can design my offense anytime. He's a really good coach. From the 45, Priestley, good pocket sense, tries a home run ball for Bynes, incomplete. Roosevelt Bynes is from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. <laughs> Try to get out there behind the safety, but could not. I know that wasn't a completion, and I know when we went, but I think you got to do that against Miami. I don't think you can allow these guys to just play inside you and then come up and hit those receivers. They've got to try to stretch the defense, and if it's a coach watching this that's going to coach against Miami, you've got to go over the top of these guys. I saw Walt Harris looking up. He was watching the replay screen. Much the quarterback like the got hit late again. Yeah, he was. The quarterback, uh, Priestley, got hit late again by McDougal. Second and ten. From the Miami 44. And markers are down. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five yard penalty, remain second down. Walt Harris is at Ohio State for a while. Kirk, you know him living in the Columbus area, obviously. Give me a sense of the kind of head coach he's made the move from coordinator to head man. Well, I think the thing that he he brings is he's a perfectionist not only on the offensive side of the ball he's organized he, he relies quite a bit on his defensive assistants to put that package together but because of the way he's able to prepare an offense I think he prepares an offense in most cases as well as any offensive coach in the country once he can get the skill to go along with those his ability to prepare a team and I think you'll see him shine here at Pittsburgh. R.J. English with a nice catch. It will bring up third and about eight. One thing about Walt Harris, you got to go back to remember, he was the head football coach at Pacific and didn't do well. This is his second opportunity. And I asked him, what is the difference? He said, I learned that I can't save everybody. Rehabilitators get fired. You got to take good kids and you got to make them better, but you can't take bad kids and make them good because they won't stick with you. 11 and 24 in those three years at Pacific. Third and eight, needing to get to the Miami 34. Open, but a little high for English and incomplete. Couldn't hang on. <laughs> Priestley could have been a little bit lower, but English also can come down with those. Fourth down, punt team coming up. Okay. He's Priestley's reaction is looking at the replay board as well. <laughs> Landy Lee's last attempt to try and to pin them inside the 20 was unsuccessful because it was a four yard punt off the side of his foot. Ed Reed is back there. It's a much better kick. If the gunner's down there to try to stop it. No, too far. It is. A touchback and Miami ball at the 20 for their first, first offensive Miami possession of the half. Here's a perfect example why Antonio Bryant, number 80, is frustrated. Watch him as he comes across the middle. I had my eye on him the whole time. Now watch him. He is absolutely wide open, and Priestley just throws the ball to the other guy. Now watch the frustration on you don't see. Antonio Bryant, but Antonio Bryant is jumping up and down and pointing. Why did you get me the football? I don't blame him for being frust frustrated. Well, Priestley was upset that English couldn't hang on. First down run, Clinton Portis, three yards to the 23. Portis had 15 carries for 74 yards and two touchdowns in the first half. The junior from Gainesville, Florida. It's okay for a, a player to get upset, but at the same time, when you're the superstar, I, I think you need to pull the quarterback over and talk to him and let him know you. Sometimes you can't get real emotional and demonstrative, even though you're you're frustrated as a wide receiver because you want the ball. Just looking at his body language right now, you can see how upset he is because he's not getting the ball in his hands. Dorsey's pass is incomplete. Pittsburgh didn't give him a great throwing lane to Andre Johnson that time. Dorsey's been slightly off the mark after opening very hot in that first quarter. You know, the thing about Ken Dorsey and down on the field pregame for college game day at the top of the show that impressed me, uh, he is really big, six foot five, just over 200 pounds, and really has that great physical frame that quarterbacks these days need because of the hits that you'll take. First down awaits at the 30. He doesn't get hit much in this offense, though. <laughs> First down to the 37, picking up 14 with Ethnic Sands out of Carroll City High School in Miami. 
There's a case of a young man who's comfortable sitting in the pocket. He sat back there and waited, and waited, and waited for that open window and then threw the ball accurately in there to Beard. But the thing that I think you look at when you're looking at a quarterback going to the next level, there's people always talk arm strength, but poise. He sat in there, knew exactly where he wanted to go as he read that defense. Beautiful play fake. Najee Davenport in the open field. Tripped up at the 31-yard line. But 31 yards for Najee. Now, you mentioned that before, Mike, about Najee Davenport being not the normal fullback. The reason is, you remember, he was a great tailback and got hurt. He slips out in the flat, Kirk. Watch a nice soft hands. But that is a giant tailback playing fullback. Well, he is 6'2", 242 mm. pounds, but they do an exceptional job in his offense of utilizing the tight end and the fullback in the passing game, something that most teams don't do in college football. Brooklyn Cordes. Nice block by Jarrett Payton as Portis gets down to the 10-yard line. Well, at the point of attack, Walter Payton's son, Jarrett, made a very nice block freeing Portis. Out. And Jarrett Payton was a highly recruited player, not just because of his surname, because he's a very talented player. And he barely gets to see the field because of the unbelievable talent they have back there. There is the sophomore who was away from football last year, obviously with the passing of his dad, Walter. Red-shirted, came back and injured his foot on some coral while scuba diving. So he didn't see as much action as he would have wanted in the spring getting ready. Dorsey's pass to Johnson, who gets away from a tackle and gets down to the three. Again, trying to get the ball to the outside of the receivers, but the thing about the running backs at Miami, the running backs, they, they turn running backs into fullbacks. Jared Payton, 6'2", 210 pounds. Uh, Najee Davenport, the starting fullback, 6'2", 242. They have great running ability, and then they teach him, teach them the ability to block and learn the position. That's why they have so many weapons on the field. These guys are, are great athletes who can run. But they also don't run a lot of ISO plays where well, those guys got to block linebackers. Mm -hmm. They finesse people very, very well. Moveman is the tight end, Williams. This is Portis looking for his third touchdown on the night. He stopped just a yard short. Third and a yard coming up. You know, guys, it seemed like they were just facing that third and long. Didn't it just seem like, you know, weren't they deep in their own territory on third and about nine? That's the thing. This is the quickest 80-yard drive we could see. <laughs> you blame the right. We're down at the one-yard line. Harry Portis. Did they stop him? Sure did. Fourth down. Oh, the Pittsburgh defense with a nice serve. Lewis Moore was in there. So was Ramon Walker, the safety. 48 and 25. Getting off the stack. When we talked to Walt Harris yesterday, I point blank asked him, what do you want to try to get out of this game if you can't win it? He said, all I want my guys to do is play hard. I think Walt Harris and Pittsburgh are playing the best they possibly can. Not good enough to beat Miami, but they're playing as hard as they can. You didn't say if you can't win it. You said you're not going to win this game, so what do you hope to accomplish? That's true. <laughs> Fourth and goal. Stretch with Portis, who cuts it back. It's good. Yeah. Now, let me say this right away. Now, that's exactly why they're not going to beat Miami. They made a great defensive play, but the other guys got better players, and he scored. Now, tell me, do you think that play was designed to go right, cut back to the left? Well, that's vision from Clinton Portis. <laughs> they flew all 11 blue jerseys to the left to stop him. Sure. Oh. And Clinton Portis Denver said he saw it before, before it even developed. He said, okay. Cut back to the left, touchdown. 80% of the games I've ever coached have seen a one with the guy with the best players. Don't ever forget that. Called recruiting. Todd Seavers, the extra point. Nine plays, 80 yards in just under four minutes. Clinton Portis, who had four two touchdown games in his career, has his first three touchdown game. Number one, Miami leads by 23. Question about Direct TV? Yeah, I hear this thing hits like an insane amount of sports channels. Hi, honey. What's up? 
You're absolutely right, sir. With DirecTV, you and your family can enjoy wonderful educational channels. Together. I'll let you guys talk. Here's the pitch. We know how you feel about DirecTV, and that's why you'll get DirecTV installed in two rooms with two receivers for just $49.99 after mail-in rebate. Circuit City, we're with you. Looks like some lucky fella won the menu lottery tonight. He'll enjoy that jackpot with the beer that leaves room for plenty of fried poultry. Miller High Life Light. Good thing there's also a light way to live. The High Life. There's some profoundly evil people walking the streets right now. I don't handicap myself with rules. You ain't no police. Stop that fool. He can't be like this. <laughs> I'm the police. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> you, you never know. That's the point. Day. Rated R. Starts October 5th. nationally televised game from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh and you move down the Allegheny River right in between the 8th Street Bridge and the Fort Duquesne Bridge there is uh, PNC Park the new home of the Pittsburgh Pirates just completed their first season and it's live inside that uh, great hall there it's a terrific exhibition area for fans to enjoy before during and after the game 30 to 7 Miami leads the Panthers Tory Cox has been busy tonight. And Miami has uh, picked up the tempo on their kickoff returns. Nice little rake of the face mask to throw him down at the 16 yard line. Just a good greeting from Jernell Weaver, back up defensive back. So the Panthers and Antonio Bryan come back out on the field. You see his numbers there just six catches for 51 yards in two prior games against Miami. So we've only had seven catches for 62 yards against his hometown team. In the game that means the most to him in the regular season. David Priestley and the Panthers start from the 16. There's a pass to Bryant. Gets it out to the 24-yard line. Picked up seven yards. Home Depot coaching adjustment from the first half. Well, it's pretty obvious. They tried to run the football in the first half. In the second half, you've got to find a way to get Antonio Bryant the football. They struggled in the first half, and I know protection is a concern, but you've got to come up with different ways. They spent the entire offseason finding different ways and different formations to move him around. We need to see some of those here in the second half. Second and two. It's been a steady guy of shotgun. Four receivers, and that time Raymond Kirkley is met by half the Canes defense. It started with William Joseph out of Edison High School in Miami. And a lot of company came his way. Just dominating up front. And, and this is the thing to, to watch as you watch Miami this year the rotation of bodies on the defensive front seven. They stay fresh. They're very athletic in the secondary, but they continue. Every 10 or 12 snaps, they rotate fresh bodies in, so by the time the fourth quarter comes around, those offensive linemen are tired, and the defense is still fresh. Third and a couple, and they throw out of the gun for it. Incomplete. The Pittsburgh fans looking for a flag on Philip Buchanan, but none comes. R.J. English was the intended receiver. And the thing about this defense with the rotation of the linemen up front, they're not afraid to say, hey, after play nine or ten, I'm ready to come out because they know they're coming back in later on. 
When I talked to Randy Shannon about this, his philosophy is all great defenses, pro or college, start with the defensive line. And that's why they're so strong up there, and that's why they play a lot of players up front. Also makes for great practices. Guys know they're going to play. Andy Lee with the punt. Beautiful kick. More than 50 yards. Buchanan had some time handling it. And the return down to the 32-yard line. Very nice kick of 51. The return was seven. And we're back in downtown Pittsburgh on Thursday Night Football after this. was possibly the finest rock and roll show I have ever seen. I smell world tour! Wow. You mean the whole world? Yeah. You're not, Gene. You're not, Paul. You're, you guys aren't Kiss. No, but we did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> stay smart. Stay at a Holiday Inn Express. My turn. The power and performance of rigid wet dry vacs. Built so heavy duty, they carry a lifetime warranty. Like our 16 gallon vac that converts to a 210 mile per hour blower in seconds. And the Home Depot's got it for just $99 every day. Rigid, buy it at the Home Depot. College football Saturday. A big SEC rematch pitch LSU against John Henderson and the Vols. LSU, Tennessee, 745 Saturday on ESPN. ESPN's Thursday Night College Football is brought to you by Taco Bell and by Pure Later. Pure Oil now, Pure Oil later. Clinton Portis has 99 rushing yards and three touchdowns. Miami by 23. Najee Davenport catches out of the backfield and picks up about five first down yards. For just joining us, Miami scored on its opening drive. Pittsburgh answered, and because Miami missed the opening extra point, the Canes were behind 7-6, facing their first deficit of the season. Since then, Miami has not looked back, scoring 23 unanswered points. Uh, 24 unanswered points, I should say. Three touchdowns and the field goal. On second and five, it's a handoff for Davenport. Who will move it forward to the 41. Lee mentioned torn ACL last year. Bouncing back from that, won the Jesse Armstead Comeback Player of the Year Award. Getting his 40 time back to 4-4. Four, four, as, as we mentioned, grown into that fullback spot. Now carrying over 240 pounds. Carries the ball effectively, but I, the thing that I think he brings to this offense is the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. We've seen that tonight. It's tough, tough to match up with Najee Davenport. Third and a yard, and Portis goes over 100 yards, took the Ramon Walker hit, and should have the first down at the 42 yard line. At this stage of the game, it appears that Miami has control of things. And of course the big picture everybody early in the year wants to know who who really has the best team in college football and it's debated about all year long but you look at this team tonight in person I ask you guys if there is an apparent weakness or potential weakness with this team tell, tell me where it is where, where do you see when they play at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg or Washington late in the year I, I have my thoughts what do you, what do you guys see? think well, I think Washington can beat them at okay. the end of the year. And I'll tell you why. I think Washington can play defense with anybody in the country. And I think Washington, if you're going to beat Miami right now, you've got to run right at them. You've got to test their manhood. You've got to stay right at them and bang at those linebackers. Because you go east-west, it is all over. They can run so well. You know, I don't, I don't know if they're going to get beat. But if I was going to coach against them, I'd try to beat them on special teams and running the football at them. 
can't see anybody stopping this offense. I, mean, I just can't. They can only stop themselves. For Shockey, the tight end, overthrown and incomplete. And a penalty marker is down. Amir Purifoy, the linebacker, with him. So you think about this team, you think about potential weaknesses, you have to look at uh, the wide receivers. We still have to see the wide receivers tested. In a, a huge game. In a big game against great athletes on the other side of the ball. Florida State, even though they're coming off a, a tough loss in Tallahassee, is a game that, whether Lee wants to admit it or not, I, I think that's a, a game that athletically would be interesting. You think about on the road at Boston College and then Washington and at Virginia Tech. The, Mike, you made a point. They only beat themselves, and maybe they're the only ones that can stop themselves with their offense, and that's probably true. Washington has a much better opportunity with the game for all the wrong, wrong reasons with the September 11th tragedy being moved down to November because now Pickett, their freshman quarterback, gets nine games of experience under his belt. Not only that, they started four of their five offensive linemen against Michigan, all taking their first snaps. Yes. Not first starts, first snaps. Davenport takes it out to the 46-yard line. Having said that about Washington, Davenport carries what impressed me last night talking to the Miami players, this is a motivated group. When you're number one in the country, you're going to be motivated. They are so motivated by the fact that they were denied because of the game at Washington last year. It's not Larry Coker and the assistant coaches running around like maniacs saying, remember Washington. These guys are motivating themselves, the players are. We talked to all these players last night, and even when we got them individually, you're right, each one we brought up what about maybe taking a team lightly like maybe Pittsburgh tomorrow night they said no chance because of what happened last year that will not happen to this team well she takes off has the first down got a shot in the back from Gerald Hayes as he was in the process of sliding but picked up nine yards Dorsey the ball carrier Gerald Hayes made the stop to get up and get up and jaw a little bit with Mark Ponka. I think there's one thing also that we could we should not forget. I think the team that wins the last two weeks in November and December will be the First team with the least amount of serious injuries. Yeah. I mean you could get a Dorsey hurt or a picket hurt or something like that. You could really yeah. change the team. Sure. And I think that's why it's very important that you play good football teams. But if you get ahead of them I take Dorsey out pretty soon. <laughs> to the eight yard line. Taken out by Ramon Walker. Portis. 28 yards for Portis. Oh. Who now has 128, and he's looking at four touchdowns, which we haven't seen since the Flutie game in the Orange Bowl in 84 by a Miami running back. Well, Portis this year, we're seeing him with the ability to break tackles. In the past, he's always had great vision, always had the, the ability to cut back. He is stronger this year, and he's able to get through those arm tackles, and then he has the speed once he gets out in the open field to make people miss. I want to say it one more time. When the Miami team quit in 1999 against Virginia Tech, that was the only kid that didn't quit. And he's proven it tonight again. A play pass here, and a marker down. The pass intended for Andre Johnson is incomplete. Some joy between Brian Knight and Ken Dorsey. Flag on the field. Well, that's another one against the Canes. Now nine on the night. Well, let's remind everyone set the table for Saturday. Joba tries to equal the Bear once again. And on ESPN2, Montreal Low and the running Purdue team takes on Minnesota. Penn State, Iowa, undefeated Iowa. Noon Eastern on ESPN, Purdue, Minnesota, right after college game day when you switch over to ESPN2. You know that Iowa team leads the Big Ten in starters returning. Now, I know if you have starters not returning from a team that didn't win much, it's no big deal. But they got experience in the Kirk Ferrin system. Miami at the 12. I know somebody in this booth was on Iowa early. I just I Kirk like, I like Iowa. He I'm, likes him. I'm glad I'm his team. friend. He lets us drive in the he back of bandwagon. Right. <laughs> right. October, November go on. You got a good team. Long way to go, though. Be an interesting game. Test for both teams, really. Yep. Portis takes it down to the 10 yard line. Tory Cox is John. No concept why the Pittsburgh players well, there's been a lot are mouthing off. These last three or four plays, there's been a lot of it. And if, if 
Hello, nothing it's else. 30 to 7. I think that's the message. Dorsey was in an argument there with a couple of Pittsburgh players, and he went over. And you could kind of, he was talking to him, and you could kind of see him. He started to clap. He probably said, guys, it's 30 to 7. There's three minutes to go in the third quarter. By the way, we're about to make it 37 to 7, so come on, let's pipe down a little bit. Why, why would you want to infuriate a team that's really good? I understand you're frustrated they're trying to show some emotion. And you're not on the field, so you don't know exactly how it's all transpired. Here's Portis trying to cut back to the nine-yard line. Gerald Hayes has had a couple of uh, good plays on these drives. Portis, if he scores another touchdown, will equal Melvin Gratton in the Air Flutie game, 47-45 in the Orange Bowl, November of 84. Gratton ran for four TDs. Very important for people to realize, just because Miami is back doesn't mean the image of the 80s is back with this team. It's a very different team and a different character that Butch Davis really developed, and now you see Larry Coker continuing to flourish with. On third and goal, that pass is incomplete. Dorsey rushed it out. Darrell Jones was the intended receiver, and Todd Seavers will come on for a field goal attempt. He sat down with those players last night. They were uh, first class. Very, really? very good sharp. Goal. Good guys. Seavers off to a good start on this young season. Nine field goal attempts in three games is a lot. Your offense can't score touchdowns every time. Get it down there. So Miami's lead is now 26 at the 2-11 mark. Third quarter for the Allegheny and the Monongahela. Formed to meet the Ohio, the Three Rivers. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mike and Ben have Ultimate TV from Microsoft, so on Sundays their place is Party Central. Protect your bishop. They can watch and record two channels at once. Hit pause. Go to the other one. So they don't miss any of the madness and mayhem. Did you see you put the king in jeopardy? They can even do replays in slow-mo. See, now he's touched his piece. Once you touch your piece, you got to use it. The Direct TV receiver with Ultimate TV. It also works with football. And this is my favorite play. We call it the stretch play. The biggest block right here is the block of the tight end. That's my aiming point. The tackle works with the tight end off of his block and then goes up to the near side linebacker and seals that block. I can choose to go anywhere I want to go. B gap, C gap, or D gap. A big back like myself loves this kind of play. If everyone gets on the man, I get a chance to be one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back, and they really don't like that. So right back in it. This play really does work. College football Saturday at noon on ESPN. Legendary coach Joe Paterno looks to tie Bear Bryant's all-time wins record as Penn State fights to right the ship against Iowa. Touchdown! At noon on ESPN2, Montrell Lowe and the surprising Boilermakers tackle Minnesota. Penn State, Iowa at noon on ESPN. Purdue, Minnesota at noon on ESPN2. It all starts on ESPN at 10.30 Eastern with College Game Day, Saturday. Well, it's great to be in western Pennsylvania, yeah. football country, for the first nationally televised game from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. The Steelers have had two preseason games here against Buffalo and Detroit. The Panthers have played two games here, East Tennessee State and South Florida, but neither of those were on national TV. It's interesting when you talk about Miami, some people, some people had this game circled as one of the games that Miami might slip up on. Remember we in the preseason? Mm -hmm. and, we, and we all talked about that. And I, I just cannot believe that the Pitt program is not any better than it is right now. They're playing hard, right. but they don't have a lot of good football players like some people thought they did. Torrey Cox kick off return from the three. There's a lot of games past him, but some are waiting to turn him off at the 20. Six-yard line. Saw an injury in the first half. Jerry, can you update it for us? Yeah, Michael, let's update uh, D.J. Williams. That's D.J. with the towel on his head there, the Gatorade towel. Uh, first quarter, left ankle. They, they thought he could come back. They taped him. He couldn't put weight on it. They took him to the locker room. X-rays were negative. Came out, retaped it. Still couldn't really push off on the ankle. He's done for the night. So sprain left ankle. No fractures. X-rays are negative, but he's done for the evening here at Pittsburgh. D.J. Williams again, Jerry, the 
USA Today National Defensive Player of the Year coming out of high school. Uh, nine days to rest up before Troy State in the Orange Bowl on October 6th. And then at we'll Florida in, State on we'll the We'll see in Tallahassee, DJ. Rod Rutherford in a quarterback for Pittsburgh. A little option look with Kirkley. And the freshman tailback, Raymond Kirkley, is Kirkley thrown down by Philip Buchanan at the 33-yard line. Pick up uh, six on the play. Rutherford, a redshirt freshman, who lined up at wide receiver and kick returner just to get on the field last year with uh, John Terman and David Priestley at quarterback. But Rod is exclusively a quarterback now. Pennsylvania High School Player of the Year in the western part of the state. In the City League around here, Perry Traditional High. Kirkley got to the outside and picked up a first down. Kirkley carry. At the 40-yard line, seven-yard game. A reminder, as soon as we're done tonight at the Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Chris Berman, a rare Boomer Sports Center appearance. Talk about the pennant races where the Mets have won, the Phillies and Rays were down earlier. Barry Bonds night off, but they'll look ahead as he chased history and the best NFL prospect out there. Sports Center with Dan and Boomer coming up after the game. Rutherford looking over to the coaching staff, trying to get the play. Fake to Kirkley. Rutherford comes the other way. And no gain. Sometimes you can have them outnumbered, but then they're a freshman like Al Marshall out of Clewiston, Florida, who's just got some speed saying, no, no. Lee, you mentioned a lot of people circled this game and thought it'd be competitive. I, I think what's hurting this offense is, is the quarterback position. Walt Harris is a, is a guy who demands a lot out of the position, and he, when he has a quarterback who understands his system and understands his scheme, he's able to attack a defense in many ways. And right now with David Priestley and, and Rod Rutherford, I don't think he's able to do that. And also he's breaking in true freshman running backs. Rutherford's pass is very, very hard for a 10-yard toss to Kirkley and incomplete. They, they just look like they're out of sync, though. You, know? you, you talked about the quarterbacks and Walt Harris. He's coached by a bunch of great ones, including NFL Kirkley. quarterbacks. Boomer Esiason was coached by Walt when he was with the Jets. And Boomer said, best coach I've ever had, Walt Harris. That's, that says a lot. It certainly does. Here's an idea of Walt's knowledge offensively. You walk in their offensive meeting room, they've got a great display of NFL jerseys in there. Players Walt Harris has coached through his years at Ohio State in the NFL, at Tennessee, in Illinois, back in the early 80s. It's third and ten pass. It's caught at the 49. First down for R.J. English to end the third quarter here in downtown Pittsburgh. Ken Dorsey's had a business-like day. Clinton Portis has over 100 yards, and Miami leads by 26. ESPN College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Now, 90 minutes. Breaker 1-9. I'll be at the Lone Star Motel. What room? Room 17. It started out as a simple prank. Oh. What was that? We had a little incident here last night. The victim was staying in room 17. Ripped his jaw clean off. But now, the joke... You really ought to get that fixed. Get what fixed? ...is on them. Your tail light. Go, 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 go! Joyride. Rated R, October 5th. Uh, gee, aren't you gonna answer those? Uh... If I do, I miss the game. I hate to miss the game. Uh-huh. You know, if you had TiVo, you could pause your TV so you wouldn't have to miss the game. Really? Uh-huh. Gee, aren't you and your wife expecting a baby? Uh, any minute now. Pause and rewind live TV. Now TV fits into your life, not the other way around. TiVo, TV and unexpected emergencies your way. I'd like a uh, latte, please. Do you have an appointment? <laughs> Grab a ticket. We'll be within just a minute. Yeah. Coffee houses are popular. Very popular. Well, what if you just want coffee house style coffee in an instant? Folgers Cafe Latte. Rich, creamy, delicious coffee house coffee without the coffee house. So it's not the coffee you drink to take a break from your day. It's the coffee you drink to break into it. Folgers Cafe Latte. Magazine? Book? 
Anybody? Beer spins hours before it's really beer. Then yeast is added, and then suddenly beer is born. It's alive. And yeast is everything. It's a beer's genes, it's bloodlines. Frederick Miller carried this yeast here from Germany in his pocket nearly 150 years ago. It's our beer's past, present, future. Not many get to see it. Even fewer get to touch it. But when it's Miller time, you can always taste it. EA Sports. It's in the game. Rated E for everyone. A little peek at Mount Washington on the other side of the Monongahela River as we come on back to Heinz Field. We start the fourth quarter on College Football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Dr. Jerry Punch, number one Miami leads by 28. Flag down for offsides. Rutherford just ran it forward. Rutherford the for four. They'll take the penalty and make it first and five instead. Another Miami. What are we got? Ten Miami penalties now? This will be number ten. That's right. Offside. Defense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. It's 10, 10, and 14 in the first three games. Well, speaking of Miami defense, this is the seventh straight regular season game. They have allowed zero points in the third quarter. That means one thing, not only a pretty good football team, but they make nice halftime adjustments. First and five at the 44. Very good. New defensive coordinator, as you mentioned, Randy Shannon. Uh, They've allowed seven, 14 points, I should say now, in 11 quarters this season. <laughs> Rutherford running out of time and running for a first down. He's the running quarterback of the two. Gets out to the 28-yard line. Matt Walters, the pursuing defensive lineman, finally made the play. Good coverage downfield and good recognition by Rutherford to be able to have the speed to pick up the first down. He has the ability to break contain and, and create. Once he gets downfield, you can see he's able to feel pretty natural with his athletic ability picking up the first down there. Showed some of that when playing wide receiver and kick returning last year. Forty seven plays under center last season. More already here this season. See some of that strong arm. Just an underneath toss for Marcus Furman, which is knocked down and incomplete. Big game this weekend with Kansas State and Oklahoma with uh, the Stoops brothers getting ready and we talked about it earlier another Stoops brother is coaching now for the Miami Hurricanes. He's the defensive back coach and you talk about making adjustments and what a great job Randy Shannon the defensive coordinator has done. I think Mark Stoops has brought a lot of energy to the secondary and, and uh, picked up where Greg Shiano, the former defensive coordinator, left off. Greg now the head coach of Rutgers. That pass intended for Antonio Bryant is incomplete. Here's Mark Stoops, up and coming young coach. Last year at Houston. Brings that same enthusiasm and intensity that you see from, uh, from his brothers. It comes from their father. That's right. He was a sensational high school football coach in the state of Ohio, Ohio for years. That's right. Great man. Third and ten from the 28. And the quarterback sophomore Rod Rutherford is intercepted. Philip Buchanan has Henry the head of him. And lots of green grass. Rutherford. Able to go through Reed to knock Buchanan out of bounds. At the 26 yard line. 67 yards on the return. Mike Rumpf gets most of the recognition as being the premier corner for this team. 
Here, Ed Reed comes over. Actually should have made the pick, but he tips it. And Philip Buchanan, who I think is one of the best cover corners this year in college football, makes the pick, and then he's got the speed to get down the sidelines. And freshman Willis McGahee turns it upfield and knocked out of bounds at the five. That's a pickup. 22, first and goal, Miami. You talk about speed. This guy, he's Willis McGahee, he can fly. Run. I'm telling you, he's from Miami Central First High School, 6'1", 220 pounds. And I'm telling you what, he's as good a second team back as there any, anywhere in the country right there. McGahee went to oh. the same high school as Najee Davenport, number four for Miami. Like most great backs, he just needs reps. That's he needs it. to gain some experience and see things. And look at he and Frank Gore, the true freshman backup, who's the third string, who's yeah. be starting in a lot of places. They're loaded in the backfield. Here is McGahee. This guy is touchdown. Miami. Absolutely special. It's the first career touchdown for the freshman. I don't want to uh, have anybody turn off the television set, but Miami has won 84 straight times when they won 30 or scored 30 points or more. 84 straight. I think 35 is probably going to happen, just to guess here on my part. How about when they score 40 or more? They're 266 <laughs> and none. They're pretty good. They're pretty good, boy. Up 33, number one Miami. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for all your help. It's my job. Wow. Honey, can we start now? Yes. Yes, we can. We know how you feel, and that's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Sweetie. Yeah, just put that anywhere. The American dream. We refuse to let anyone take it away. So GM announces interest-free financing on every new car, every new truck now through October 31st believe in the dream believe in each other keep America rolling that bolt was torqued on in Detroit there's no shame in using the hot wrench to get it apart but what if you're out of acetylene there's still a last resort they call the cold wrench. Promise yourself a taste of the high life and see if you don't find new strength to get to Miller time. My father was in the garage business and his father was in the garage business. Well, my father was my mechanic all my life. I've got some old, old craftsman tools that are still around, which I love and I, I treasure. My grandfather and also my father's tools, which uh, nobody could ever buy. 1,800 craftsman hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever. He really believed in craftsmen, same as I do. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. Three River Stadium used to stand just to the left there. And in the old Three Rivers parking lot now stands Heinz Field. Over the Panthers and Steelers. The Kings make their home wherever they end up. 40 to 7, Miami. Tory Cox going to let Shante Spencer get a shot at one here. And a return out to the 29 yard line. Pittsburgh offense comes back out. That's Rob Petiti. As you know, games were canceled uh, back some 10 days ago because of the September 11th tragedy in the World Trade Center. Rob's father, a stockbroker on the 31st floor of one of the two buildings, Rob was heading off to the football complex about a mile away from campus and didn't know about anything that was going on until he saw Brennan Carroll, one of the offensive teammates in the parking lot, Rob's mom had called the football office to let him know that dad was okay, everything was okay. His parents visited last weekend, and you know that was a long and loving embrace, as so many have had. Some of the 
stories of thankfulness that have been told around the country over the last few weeks touching so many people in college football including that young man there Rob Petiti redshirt freshman from Rumson New Jersey both coaches talked about how their players had team meetings the day after and really the morning of September 11th just to try to tell the players what will lie ahead for them and the coaches were honest they don't know as none of us do in this uncertain world that we now find ourselves and the young men have really handled it very well both sides said pass caught by Lamar Slade out to the 42 yard line you go into that wristband there and Petiti has on one of those wristbands the uh, letters WTC just a reminder of what happened and certainly won't need many reminders of the World Trade Center and being thankful that his dad is still here to watch him play football it makes a 40 to 7 score look incredibly insignificant doesn't it on a young Pittsburgh offensive line that has one senior but they're uh, trying to lay the foundation built for the future as this program is trying to do the same and recapture some of the past glory of Pittsburgh football option pitch to Raymond Kirkley and this running back's had a pretty nice night Kirkley with the ball moving close to 100 yards on the evening and has it on the nose now with that 17th carry showing some toughness for a true freshman to be able to come in against Probably the best defense in college football. He's run very hard tonight and is, uh, definitely has a bright future here in Pittsburgh. Had 99 yards on 28 carries in the first two games. From midfield, Rutherford and the Panthers. Antonio Bryant stays in bounds and fights forward for 15 yards, down two. The 30 yard line. Looks like pick up 20 yards. Well, it's a night that not only showing off the new Heinz Stadium here in Pittsburgh, Heinz Field, but also honoring one of the great Panthers of all time. Eighth Jersey retired, our colleague Mark May. Thanks, Jersey Mark. retired, uh, Outland Trophy, All American, offensive lineman, then went on to the Hogs with the Washington Redskins. What a thrill to see Ditka and Marino and all the other Jerseys retired as they retired your number 73 at halftime. Had to be special for you, Mark. It was fabulous for me to be out there and, and to be recognized with such great athletes and great football players, and, and not only that, great people. And I think it's a great night, not only for us, and particularly for me, but for the University of Pittsburgh. You had to be amazed, as all the uh, former Pitt Panthers were, at the new digs where these players are playing and training as well. They don't know how good they have it now. <laughs> in the old days, you know, Lee, those, oh. old, those old locker rooms with oh. the rusty lockers and stuff like that in the old fields, but they've got a great, fantastic facility now. One of the best state of the art in the country in this new stadium and it's got to help the University of Pittsburgh and Walt Harris and Steve Peterson the athletic director to recruit here and I think they're going to be very competitive down the road we're looking at down the road at the University of Pittsburgh the next two or three years first and 15 here for Rutherford after the five yard penalty he'll scramble forward with a nice game to the 13 yard line nice run by Rod Mark you had so much success at the college level and of course at the next level how is it different to come back and see guys from your college days compared to seeing guys from from the pro days the, the feeling is like you see some of the players that you played with and you look at them and some of them have gained 50 pounds <laughs> i've lost 50 pounds. i was gonna say you look great here <laughs> and you look at them and it's just a great feeling it's overwhelming when you see some of the players that you, you practiced against and you played with and played against them. And, and to come back and see those players today a lot of those guys are professionals pass caught to the four-yard line, Chris Wilson keeps battling down to the three-yard line. So the Panthers with a chance for a score here. Well, that halftime ceremony, Ditka on the field, Hugh Green, Dan Marino, Bill Fralick, the other jerseys that were retired. That's, that's an impressive collection of talent on the field to be joining that group, Mark. It, it is, and for an offensive lineman, when I look at that situation, it's like, me? Why am I included with these greats? And, you know, you look at a Dan Marino, yeah. and you have Tony Dorsey, those guys out there, and it, it's almost overwhelming to think that I can be included with those players, and the Marshall Goldbergs, and Mike, and Joe Schmidt, and Mike Dick, and those players. It, it's just an awesome feeling for me. I really can't believe it. I'm still shaken by it. I'm stirred by it. Tossed to Kirkley, who couldn't hang on for a second, gathered it, and was not down at the five 
by Jarrell Weaver, who also went to Northwestern High School in Miami. But people don't realize, if you think football tradition, ask a college football fan, who has won more national titles, Miami or Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh. It's Pittsburgh by far. Yep. Pittsburgh, nine national nine. titles, and Miami's four. Miami or Notre Dame. Campbell Pittsburgh, Notre Dame. Made the tackle. Pittsburgh wins every time. If you look at it, people don't realize University of Pittsburgh with the great tradition that we've had here over the course of time. And not only just the last decade or two or three decades. You look at in the early days when Lee played in 1910 and 1920 <laughs> in those days. Leather helmets. No, no, no helmets, helmets in those no days. Helmets. No helmets. No, you can go back to those days, but it's a great tradition here that over the course of time. With the option pitch on the ground and Kirkley loses five yards. Look at what Walt Harris is doing, Marky. Look at the direction of the program, the facilities, his philosophies. You mentioned the future. And, and being here in western Pennsylvania, if he can put a fence up in, in this part of the, uh, the state, in this part of the country, he's got to have a chance to turn this program around. You're absolutely right. If they can just get the recruits in their own backyard, western Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania, yeah, around the city of Pittsburgh, the they'll be able to compete with anyone. If you look at the last 10 years, everybody's kind of cherry-picked the best athletes out of the state of Pennsylvania. And one thing he's got going for him now is the down years at Penn State. Absolutely. And now yeah. we can recruit, and I exactly. mean, we at the University of Pittsburgh, we can get those university... Sure players to come here the state of Pennsylvania the state of Pennsylvania players to come to the University of Pittsburgh that used to go ah. elsewhere the Big Ten Penn, Penn, state. Penn state yep this is third and goal Rutherford will roll has Bryant break it open comes back to the other side and a touchdown is scored by the tight end Chris Wilson in two options Bryant near side and Wilson far side well, you know, for some people, that was a very, very big play for Pittsburgh. Wilson, who caught a touchdown against Miami last year, has another one here this year. Nick Lott will attempt the extra point. Oh, Rutherford leads a touchdown drive, and Nick Lott's on for the PAT. Mr. May? We have business to pay your salary here. Yes, You've sir. got a meeting at 9 a.m. in Bristol oh, tomorrow. Yes, I've got to be back for those production meetings. You know how they are. Great job. We've got double headers on the weekend. Thank you. Mark, congratulations. Thank you. Proud to call you cool. one of our teammates Miami. now. Thank you very much. As well as one of the great Panthers. We Mark May, his 73 retired here tonight in Pittsburgh. The lead for Miami, 26. On Saturday, October the 6th, England meet Greece in the final game of the World Cup tournament. In front of an expected home crowd of 67,000 at Old Trafford, England will be hoping to repeat the 2-1 victory they had in Athens earlier this year. Don't miss this chance to see it, live on direct ticket pay-per-view on DirecTV. Play I'm designing here for you guys today. Call it change right, 22 Houston. This play isolates the Mike linebacker right in the middle. That's me right there, 16, that's me. <laughs> X has a go route, the fullback's blocking and running a reroute. Sells like he's going to the flat and busts right back across the middle. The Mike linebacker drops, they play cover two, take your shot, you always gotta take a shot. Once he catches the ball in the middle, he can do great things with it. Back in the pocket, looking to throw to the end zone, touchdown. That's it. College football Saturday. A big SEC rematch pits LSU against John Henderson and the Vols. LSU, Tennessee, 745 Saturday on ESPN. The American dream. We refuse to let anyone take it away. So GM announces interest-free financing on every new car and every new truck. Now through October 31st, believe in the dream, believe in each other, keep America rolling. ESPN's Thursday Night College Football is presented by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And in part by Saturn. Now with two distinctly different car lines, the L-Series and the S-Series. SportsCenter follows our broadcast from Western PA tonight. 40 to 14, Miami and Pittsburgh. I'm 
they put some hands personnel on the field in case it was an onside kick. But it was a line drive kickoff instead, taken by the normal punt returner and cornerback Philip Buchanan to the 28 yard line. Philip Buchanan returned the kickoff. The tackle was made by Brian Heineke. Those of you who might just be tuning in, here's the Miller Lite storyline tonight. Miami has had at least a hundred yard jump on offense over Pittsburgh from the first quarter on Ken Dorsey 14 incompletions tonight a touchdown and an interception star of the game has been Clinton Portis with 131 yards that really means the Miami offensive line as well Antonio Bryant just three catches for 39 yards for the Bolitnikoff award winner of a year ago new quarterback in the game the redshirt freshman Derek Pruda from Deerfield Beach Florida and he gives to Willis McGahee for just a yard or two Miami's got its backup quarterback in there. You see his high school numbers because his college numbers as a redshirt freshman are 0 for 1. Hasn't done much in the passing game. Played a decent amount in the game against Penn State and obviously Rutgers when it was 61 to nothing. Well, Larry Coker didn't want to rub it in, so he was just running the ball. Still got to 61 nothing. The <laughs> game he chased down by that Panther defense. Brandon Hayes made the play, and here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Michael, once you're when you're once a hurricane, you're always a hurricane. Talking about James Jackson, a great member of the 11 and 1 hurricane squad of a year ago that finished second, and now a Cleveland Brown. And James, you guys came back to watch this football team tonight. Give us your assessment of the 2001 Miami Hurricanes. Pretty tough football team. Oh yeah, the guys are looking great. You know, myself and Earl Little and Andre King came out tonight and watched these guys and root them on and uh. Well, they haven't played in about 19 we, uh, days, so uh, happy to come out and see them play. I know these guys really wanted to get Washington uh, when we had the break uh, a week ago, and they got to wait now at the end of the year. I know that probably sits still pretty heavy on your mind. You guys lost to Washington a year ago and got shut out on the BCS, so when you thought you should have been playing for the, the national game, championship. Jerry. Oh, I was excited to uh, watch that game, but, uh, you know, it didn't happen. So uh, they'll have them at the end of the season, and uh, those guys will be ready for them. So I hope those guys, our guys come out and prepare for them. We talked about how patient and how, how much a team player Clinton Portis was a year ago playing behind you. You, you shot as the offensive running take a look at what he has done tonight he's been pretty impressive here 131 yard 33 yards and three touchdowns oh the first thing he said when he saw me was oh i'm, I'm coming to get you 124 yards you got in uh, last week's game so uh, <laughs> i started laughing but he's, he's been doing a great job and i'm happy very unselfish athlete as you watch what he can do uh, you know he opened the year he said you saw the penn state game all he did was rush for 164 yards up at state college oh yeah like i said he's been doing a great job and uh what he did against penn state was very impressive i got a phone call after that and said i got like a james you got like 139 yards against them and i got like 160 something and uh he keep rubbing it in but i'm happy for him Hey, thanks for coming tonight. Good luck this week against the Jaguars. You guys hit the Jacksonville. Oh, yeah, we travel to Florida Saturday, and uh, hopefully we can go in and get a win. Hey, good luck to you. Thanks. James Jackson and the three other former Miami Hurricanes coming to watch the Hurricanes play here at Pittsburgh tonight. Michael? Okay, Jerry, the trip was also made over by their former head coach, Butch Davis, who uh, had a chance to stop by. A couple-hour drive from Cleveland to Pittsburgh, run by Willis McGahey down to the 39. That last catch, as Jerry was talking to James Jackson, was by Kellen Winslow, the son of the... NFL Hall of Famer, the Pro Football Hall of Famer, I beg your pardon, freshman tight end. He's here at the University of Miami now, seeing action for the second time this year. Walter Payton's son, Kellen Winslow's son. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pretty good bloodlines on that sideline. Huh? Remember last year, the recruiting process, he went back and forth and back and forth, and finally he ended up down in Miami. Here's Jared Payton spinning for about four yards you know, the, the thing that sometimes can be scary is when this team brings in its second and third string players and they still come at you with the same speed it tells you about the future of Miami football it's not just boy this is a special class a special group of seniors I mean you go all the way down to, from the juniors to the sophomores to the freshmen and they've done a very good job of building this program back up. They have reloaded, haven't they? Yep. Brian Knight, one of the two players hit on the tackle. Um, Willis McGee area. We found Butch Davis, coach of the Cleveland Browns. An outstanding performance by the Browns. Davis and James Jackson in defeating the Lions in Cleveland on Sunday. 
Jerry mentioned. They go to Jacksonville, and all of a sudden, Cincinnati and Cleveland are a factor in the AFC Central, which has the folks around here in Pittsburgh interested. Steelers play the Bills on Sunday. Bengal fans coming out of the woodwork as well. <laughs> From the 35. <laughs> That's Frank Gore, the true freshman out of Coral Gables with the carry. You know, we're talking about the, my uh, defenses and speed and everything. I'll give you a perfect example. The Pitt defense has 10 of 11 players from the Northeast. Not one football player, but one football player from Florida, right? One. Now, Miami has nine football players on defense from the speed states. I'm telling you guys out there, coaches, if you want speed, go to California, Texas, and go to Florida. Miami's offensive line is built with guys from Canada and everything else. But when you went to skill positions, you got to go to the speed states and get them. Or these guys will outrun you every time. Gore, the true freshman, fights forward. You know, we asked the poll in the first quarter, ESPN.com. Greatest Miami quarterback of all time, and 32,000 plus vote for Jim Kelly over Vinny and Bernie and Steve Walsh, who was as productive and successful in big games as uh, many of them, and Craig Erickson as well. well. Jim really started it all back in the late 70s, late 70s, early 80s. Wanted to be a Penn State linebacker in Joe Paterno's mind, the win at Penn State there. And first back to back nine win seasons that kind of put this program on the map. Jim Kelly wins our ESPN.com poll. We asked the 32,000 plus who voted. Ken Dorsey may be the next in that line. You see his numbers on the night. Well, who, do you, who would you guys have voted for if we had a computer up here to vote? So many, so many great quarterbacks. I, I because it was, uh, it, I was personally at an age where you just remember it, you know, 17, 18 years old. Vinny Testaverde was a guy that he looked up to as a high school player and very athletic. Even though he was tall, he was able to get back there and he was mobile enough to avoid the defenders. And once, I know he didn't get it done in, in the big games and for the national title, he threw some interceptions, but uh, I liked Vinny. To pass, caught just a yard game for Kyle Cobia, the Richard freshman fullback. Speaking of Miami, the, the first one, the first All-American quarterbacks they ever had was Fran Kersey. He was an All-American in 1959, oh. a left-handed quarterback. There's your guy. That's my man, and he's next door doing Westwood One. The National radio broadcast. National radio. That's right. He was a great left-handed quarterback. I think he was the first All-American quarterback. Was he? Yep. Fran oh. Kersey, 1959. Don't forget. George Myra. Yeah, but he was right-handed. Oh, I, know, I know that I'm just saying he's oh, still he quarterback. South, oh, yeah. But he was after <laughs> Myra was after. <laughs> I know. Person. I know. Oh. I'm just, I'm just, you know, showing George my Myra. age too, Coach. George Myra. Delay a game flag here on. Showing your age. In night in, in 1953, I was a 17-year-old freshman, and guess who I started against as a quarterback? The University of Miami Delay in the Orange Bowl. You know, like, the scooter? The scooter started against the ball? Yeah. Main third down. So I'm waiting till it's the scooter started the opening game in 1953 as a quarterback at 17 years old against Miami. Obviously, just a second. To two minutes. We didn't Thank score. You. Didn't Obviously, score? No. Didn't score. The next what, year what, I got him, we didn't score again. <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> First game I ever played in, Kirk, against the University of Miami. 17 years old against the Canes when they were tough in the Orange Bowl. 17. Got 17 years old. Made it to halftime without the concussion. <laughs> that's, a, that's a success. Yeah. When did Florida State go from being uh, an all-girls school to letting I, you guys in? There? 1947, they let men in. It was 10 girls to every guy when I went to Florida State. I went, life is good? No, oh, life is good. I went to visit the University of Florida. I was there all weekend. I saw three girls. I went to universe I went to Florida State to visit. I saw three guys. I said, hey, life is good. I'm going to this place where all the girls are. 40 to 14 with a minute 30 oh. left is usually the point in the night where I lose complete control. And that's once again well, happened. This is a very important field goal. Do you realize this? Todd Sievers on for the field goal, and it is oh good. my goodness. Sievers connects. From 38 yards. Important because we have a commercial to get in, Lee, before Berman and Patrick with Sports Center right after we're done. The American dream. We refuse to let anyone take it away. So GM announces interest free financing on every new car and every new truck now through October 31st. Believe in the dream. 
believe in each other. Keep America rolling. just right my what big eyes you have you have no idea great tasting one calorie pepsi one this one's just right watch barry bonds at bats live on baseball tonight follow them live online on espn.com a ride joins us from anaheim kurt Schilling goes after win number 22 against the dodgers a special 90 minute baseball tonight friday 9 30 p.m coming up on sports center can the Mets keep their late season surge going? A future Hall of Famer decides it's not time yet. And which college star will have the biggest impact in the NFL? Join me, that's right, Chris Berman and Dan Patrick after the game. Well, we want to congratulate these cheerleaders right there. Eight times they ran across the field with those flags. Can you imagine what they did? when they played Rutgers, they had the second team girls come in. And there's Ivis. Sebastian the Ivis. Sebastian the Ivis. <laughs> the mascot. I can't wait to put his head on one game. Maybe at Florida State in Tallahassee. Would that be cool? Oh, man. At game day? Miami fans uh, never forgive you. Miami in three games has scored 25 times. Yo. Torrey Cox the return across the 20 and to the 23-yard line. Back with the final 69 seconds before Sports Center with Dan Patrick and Chris Berman. So log on to ESPN.com, keyword discover card, and enter your predictions. Win the chance to appear on January 1st for the hosts of College Game Day at the Rose Bowl and test your wits against the finest analytical college football minds known to man. They love me for my mind. Captain Game Day. Discover Card gets you on Game Day Challenge. ESPN.com, keyword, Discover Card. Right now, when you buy any four Michelin tires, get a pair of Motorola Talk About Two-Way radios free during Michelin's Make Contact event. They're great for road trips, on the slopes, or for keeping track of the kids. So make contact now at your participating Michelin dealer. <laughs> Once again, Michelin has earned the J.D. Power & Associates Awards for customer satisfaction in tires. Now that's cause for celebration. In this time of need, the American Red Cross is profoundly grateful for your generous outpouring of support. A long period of uncertainty and recovery awaits us all. Please maintain your resolve to donate blood. Call 1-800-GIVE-LIFE to schedule an appointment. And please be persistent. The need for blood will continue in these days, weeks, and months ahead. Call 1-800-GIVE-LIFE. Together, we can save a life. This message has been brought to you by New York. Well, back in Miami, they're telling us that we're going to see the hurricanes in Pasadena. It's only the end of September, but I like the chances. Good-looking team. Rob Rutherford, the quarterback, is hit. As he throws, pass is incomplete, but pass interference will be called on Entrell Roll of Miami. Well, the average score in the first three games against Penn State, Rutgers, and Pittsburgh will be 45 to 7. And we can clearly declare Larry Coker's teams the champions of the Keystone State. They've come in here and beat up Penn State by 26 and Pittsburgh pass now interference. by 29. On the defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, gentlemen, off you go to uh, Oklahoma, Kansas State, college game day, 10:30 a.m. Eastern. It'll be a terrific atmosphere there, as it was last year for the game day shows. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be in Norman this year. Last year we were in Manhattan and in Kansas City for the Big 12 title game, and uh, this year the Sooners get the Cats on their own turf. So should be uh, should be an outstanding football game. So many good storylines, oh, Coach, yeah. here coming up on the weekend. We went through one big game in the, almost each conference, really, and you see them uh, listed there. Yeah, but there's a big pay 
back game down in the swamp. Well, when Mississippi State really embarrassed Florida last year, and old Steve Spurrier, the ball coach, has been waiting a year to get old Jackie Sherrill. LS. That's LA, that's uh, Mississippi State against Florida at Gainesville. LSU Tennessee also has another flag. Yeah, but that down. was not the same kind of game. No. I mean, no. Mississippi State beat them like 42 to 14 or something. Prior to the snap. 47 oh, 35, and it just oh, made them look bad. Remains second down. Both oh, both ball coach would be waiting for Yeah, Miss, Mississippi State last year had two backs go over 150 yeah. yards rushing. Dante Walker and Desenzo De Miller. And yep. You have a feeling that Andre Davis and the Florida Gator defense will be uh, pretty fired up playing at the Swamp against that same team. Notre Dame trying to avoid 0-3 at Texas oh, A&M. And two big games in the Big Ten, Michigan State, Northwestern. I, I like Michigan State. Good team that not a lot of people are talking about. And Illinois, Michigan in the big house. They have played two fabulous games with the road team winning the last two years. And they'll be in Ann Arbor on Saturday. Long ball, Rutherford. Incomplete as his long toss was intended. Was intended for, for Roosevelt Bynes. This is one of those weekends where there's been so much build up, so much talk about which teams are legitimate, which teams are, are the real deal. And we're going to find out a lot after this weekend. You're going to have some, uh, some big games, and you're going to have some teams that are finally going to arrive and we will be able to find out LSU and Tennessee between those two teams a lot of hype about both these teams who's the better team you can go on down the line there's eight or nine matchups that are very intriguing are going to tell us a lot Wade Matkin went at the swamp as the Kansas State quarterbacks L Roberson going Brother to play in that big Oklahoma Complete game will John Bay. Navarre answer the call for Michigan in the big game a, a lot of untested quarterbacks are going to be Supremely tested. Talk about tested quarterback. I like that Jonathan Smith, Oregon State, and Corvallis against the great UCLA defense. I think that's going to be a classic game of a team that's an underdog sneaking around and getting them back in their home park. I love to hear great UCLA defense from you. I'm telling you, you believe that? Right I, I, well, I'm telling you, Kirk and I talked to you. Well, they were lousy. Mm -hmm. Last few that years, right? those kids, those kids have grown up. They're all seniors now. But they're very good. The other, the other team out in the West Coast, look out for Washington State. Caught by English inside the 20, so as Bryant's on the bench, Pittsburgh trying to move it down, and get that last score before Sports Center here. A reminder, guys, as soon as we're done for you, Miami Pitt fans, big college football fans, you can come over to ESPN News. We'll be here for a post-game conversation about this one. Rutherford's pass is incomplete. Many of you will stay right through for Sports Center with Chris Berman and Dan Patrick. But if you want more on this game, go over to news. We'll be there for about five or six minutes, and then you can come back for the full highlights on Sports Center. This makes an interesting situation for old coach Walt Ed Harris. What is he going to do with Rutherford and Priestley? Mm -hmm. Huh? Rutherford's off, played okay. Off, last offense seems to have a little bit more spark with Rutherford. Rutherford. With Rutherford. Rutherford. The thing is, you can tell he's a young quarterback. He throws everything so hard. He needs to develop a little bit more of a touch. Pittsburgh plays at Notre Dame on October 6th, the week from this Saturday. Some interest here. Incomplete. The receiver broke open. Rutherford's pass. And Lamar Slade could not catch up to it. One thing about Rutherford is the fact that he's 6'3", 250, and he hasn't played much. He's a great high school football player. He's only a sophomore. Right. And if Walt Harris is going to build his program around somebody, he might as well start building right now about uh, for Rutherford because Priestley is a senior. Yeah, that, and you look at the future. We've talked yeah, about the, the facilities. Yeah. But you know what? They, they have a commitment from one of the better high school quarterbacks yes. in the state of Pennsylvania who's already verbal to, to play for Pittsburgh. And that is something that Walt Harris, in my mind, for his offense, desperately needs, a big-time quarterback. You're right. On third and ten, Incomplete. Speaking of high school quarterbacks, guess where Miami's got one of the great quarterbacks hidden out that's already committed to him? Ken Dorsey's high school. Oh, really? 6'5 quarterback, they say he is a sensational player. Back out there to California? Same high school that Ken Dorsey has is his quarterback already committed to the University of Miami. They say there's a superstar coming. 
so they're really cleaning up too all over the country. You know, a lot of talk towards the end of the year. Is Ken Dorsey going to come back? Is he going to yeah. go out? I think he needs to come back for another year. He needs, still needs to develop and get a little bit stronger. And there's still a lot of talk between now and the end of the year. Perhaps the final snap up 29 incomplete. Flag is down. RJ was at the goal line and the flag is thrown here on fourth down so Pittsburgh will have another shot at it as the game continues. I bet you there's some places they're not turning this television off right now. Look at English here. What do you think Mike? I think that was a heck of a hit by Sean Taylor the red shirt freshman. Had a gullet for prep down there in Miami. He got held before before he came across there. So the pass interference will move it forward 15 yards down to the three. Oh. Yo, this is my second and third yo. Yo, yo. And Pittsburgh. Has taken the time. Out. Remind you, Dan Patrick and Chris Berman are patiently waiting for Sports Center. Next week, we will be in Corsol's old stomping ground. Yep. It's Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. Louisville. I, when I get there, I'll say Louisville. Louisville. I'm not on the grounds yet. So. <laughs> Colorado State, Louisville. Colorado, I was shocked to watch the score go by. Colorado State lost to San Diego State last week and now a quarterback change for Sonny Lubick's team but we'll see them in a rematch of the bowl game from last year. We're going to see Papa John Stadium. Yeah. Brand new no, stadium. Another great stadium. Right. Brand new stadium. Yeah, well, Louisville Louisville stadium coming online Louisville. here. Yeah. One of the things you, know, you and I and, and Lee we know about Colorado State. We've seen them many times over the course of the last three years. You can always count on good offense. That's why I was shocked to see them shut down so so much by San Diego State. Yep. Well, Louisville's got a great offensive too. I mean they could score. Great quarterback. Great quarterback. But Illinois just looked too good against yeah. them. I just watched their Illinois tape get ready for Illinois yes, Michigan sir. on Saturday. Illinois defense is different, aggressive, and good. Good. Got a new uh, Mike Cassidy. Yes. There's a new defensive coordinator in there. Three. Better secondary people in Illinois now. Yeah. Some guys that can run. Rob Turner fired three defensive coaches. Got a new defensive coordinator. Looks like it works. A penalty marker is down. Miami. Uh, I'm sorry, Miami took a timeout. A flag was thrown by the back judge as well. Miami may have had a dozen players on the field. They did. Well, Larry Coker yeah. won his first ever game at Penn State against Joe Paterno. Not many people can say that. Larry Coker can be a first year head coach to win a national championship. First time ever as a head yes. coach in college. Not many people can say that. He's going to challenge uh, Dennis Erickson's marks, but remember, yeah, Erickson was sure a coach in college be before that. Two places. Mm -hmm. That's right. Out of the Washington State. Yes. Yes. He's got a chance not only to win a national championship as a first time ever college head coach, a chance to do it with two new coordinators as well. The coordinators have changed. That's monumental. And it's a credit to Butch Davis, who put everything in place. But, uh, you know, the keys to a lot of nice cars have been turned over to people who can't drive them that fast. Good point. Good point. One of the good things about him, remember, the players wanted him. Yes. They're playing hard for him. Interminable end to this game. Rutherford. Touchdown. Good job by Rod Rutherford who covered up the ball and took it into the end zone. 43 20 as Antonio Bryant continues to watch. Nick Lotz will attempt the extra point on the far end of the bench. I'd like to see that. Well, we talked to him yesterday. Remember, he's a very emotional guy, and Walt Harris has talked to him about all the things he's doing. He's a great football player that's just frustrated. You know, the guy went the highest award in college football for receiver last year, and he can't get things done this year. Yeah. Last time I checked, though, it's result right here that matters, not how many catches he makes. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the try. As we wait for the extra point, Bryant was uh, 
involved in an incident. He was on a plane this summer after working at Santana Moss's youth football camp, and police officers came on and arrested him. He had no idea what was going on. The people who bought the plane ticket for Brian did so with a stolen bank card. Brian had nothing to do with it. But Brian was the one arrested as they were checking the numbers on the card. And Brian said to Walt Harris, Coach, trust me on this one. Um, fine, I didn't do anything wrong. Walt Harris trusted him. It ends up about 10 days later, all the facts came out, and Antonio Bryant was guilty of doing absolutely nothing wrong in that situation. He's a, an emotional kid who's very interesting background. He was mom, Irene, was 15 when he was born in the Liberty City section of Miami. She took odd jobs, did everything for her son. There's a story once that was in ESP in the magazine, a very interesting article. She was out buying stuff, and Antonio wanted something. So she put back the nail polish remover that she bought just so Antonio could have what he wanted. He went to a magnet school in Coral Gables, really was well-educated. He, he speaks Spanish. He's a very intelligent young man. When we were talking about the September 11th tragedy with him yesterday, he was quoting uh, verses of Scripture, things from the Bible to pull on some strength to try to get us all through this. He's difficult to understand, and you need to invest time understanding him. From afar, you might get a different picture. And you see this tonight, and like Lee said, it's frustration. Pressure. But I agree with you, Kirk. You want to see somebody who's mature enough as a junior to say, hey, I may not be out there so they don't get my ankle hurt, but I want my guys to know I got your back here, guys. Right. That's the only thing that, that I think has troubled Walt Harris when it comes to Antonio Bryan is the immaturity at times and the way he he's so volatile and he, he means well, but he, you just mentioned he's an emotional player. And sometimes he speaks and then he thinks about what he said after he said it. And uh, I think that's a, a sign of the immaturity. And it's too bad because he, they need him as a leader. You win a Blitnikoff and you have the respect of everybody on your team. People look to you for guidance and for leadership. And Walt Harris, as this onside kick comes up now, said something that I was thrilled to hear from a college coach. Didn't go the 10 yards. Ended up being recovered by Miami, so it doesn't matter. Walt Harris said, I invested a lot of time in understanding Antonio and his background and upbringing so I can help him. There are a lot of coaches who say, hey, I, I've been around the block. I know how to deal with people. So my way or the highway. He has invested the time, and that world gets around. And that will help Walt Harris attract star players who haven't had a father figure growing up, need to grow up and mature. He's been through it and understands. Well, with the win here, the Canes will go to 3 and 0. Pittsburgh will fall to 1 and 2 at Notre Dame, Syracuse at Boston College, still ahead, as well as the game against Virginia Tech down in Morgantown. Panthers going to have some work to do to finish over 500 this year. The Canes come back from their 19-day layoff with an impressive win. Final margin tonight for Larry Coker's team, 22. Our final score: Miami 43, Pitt 21. We're moving over to ESPN News to recap the game, all you college football fans. Meantime, Sports Center is next with Chris Berman and Dan Patrick. You guys, stay through and enjoy that. With Jerry Punch, Lee Corso, Kirk Herb Street, all the women and men of our ESPN crew, nice to be back with our Thursday night family as well. This is Mike Tirico. Thank you for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the internet.